All right, so to get things started, I wanna grab two pieces of software here. The first one is gonna be Node.js, which allows us to run JavaScript outside of the browser. This is gonna be super helpful for us in our first section of the course, where we're just running some very basic commands, and we just want to very quickly look at the output. Okay, so that's gonna allow us to do that. The other tool we're gonna to get, or the other piece of software, it's gonna be Visual Studio Code. This is just a code editor, so it's a place where we can type our code out. Okay, so let's start with Node.js. We wanna to go to nodejs.org. So you wanna type that into your browser. I'll leave the link in the description to make it really easy for you to find. And then on this page, you'll see download for, and then your machine. In my case, it's Windows. In your case, it might be Mac. It's available for each one. And then where it says recommended for most users, you wanna click that button and then go through all the prompts to get this guy installed, okay? So once you've finished that up, then you wanna head over to code.visualstudio.com. Again, I'll leave the link in the description to make it easy for you. And you want to grab Visual Studio Code. So this is a code editor. When you talk about code editors, there's many, many choices, okay? But Visual Studio Code, in my opinion, is the best one right now. A lot of people use Brackets or Atom or something like that. You can use whatever you want, but we're gonna be using the integrated terminal, okay? So that we can all be on the same page. So that's why I'm choosing this code editor. So again, where it says download for Windows, it might say download for Mac. You can actually click this guy and you can see that there's Mac OS, you have Windows and you have Linux. Okay, so download your specific software for your machine. Okay, so once you've done that, you wanna open Visual Studio Code and you also want to set up a folder in your documents or in your desktop, wherever, that is for this course. So we can say it's JavaScript course, or you can say it's YouTube JavaScript course, whatever you wanna put down there to identify that this is the folder you're gonna be working with. So you wanna head over to the file, okay, at the top, and you wanna click file, and where it says open folder, you wanna open that folder that you just created. Okay, so once that's done, I just wanna take you through a few things. First off, you might notice that the colors on your screen don't match the colors on mine. That's because I have a theme, okay? So if you go to file, and you go to preferences and you go to color theme, you can change this, okay? So these are ones that I have installed. They're available with this extensions menu right here. Okay, and I'll show you that in a minute. But once you go to this, you'll see some that are default, okay? So for example, you have this light plus, which is default, okay? You can click that. So this is if you wanna have a lighter color. And then if you want a darker color, we'll go to preferences, color theme, and you can do this dark plus if you want or I'm gonna use the high contrast, okay? Cause that's what I like. Now, if you want to search for themes, you can click this guy right here, which is your extensions. And I have a bunch of these guys installed. You might wanna Google search best themes and like look through the different options and play with them. Over time, you'll find one that you really like. For right now, it's not really that important. So the last thing I wanna do before we conclude this, I wanna go up here to terminal and I wanna click where it says new terminal, okay? And I want you to type the word clear, hit enter. Okay, that gets rid of all that stuff. And then what I want you to do is type node, okay, space hyphen V. Okay, make sure the V is lowercase. Hit enter. And I get the version number of node that I've installed. So if you've installed node correctly, you'll see that version number. If you didn't install it correctly, you're gonna get a error message. Okay, so an error message. And let me show you one of them. So let's say you type node space, and then let's say I do a hyphen and then a capital letter V. Okay, you get bad option, okay? Or let's say node and then no space hyphen V like this. You see, you get all kinds of different stuff. So if you're not getting exactly what I got here, then you probably made a typo, okay? Or you didn't install node correctly. Either way, you wanna make sure you get that taken care of, okay, before we move on to the next part. All right, so to get things started here, I just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page. So we should have created a folder and that folder could be named whatever you want. It's just for contents for this course. So I've called mine JavaScript course. So you wanna go up here to file and then you wanna to go to open folder and you wanna select the location of that folder on your computer. So once you've done that, you wanna go over to this explore icon. You wanna click on that and it should show you that you're inside of this folder and you want to click on this guy right here, which is for a new file, okay? This is for a new folder. So you want new file, the one all the way to the left right here. So click on that, and then you're gonna name a new file, something we're gonna work with for a little while. I'm gonna call this basics, 
Dot js okay so basics.js everything's lowercase you can call this file whatever you want just make sure you end it with .js so that visual studio code knows you're working with a javascript file so now i'm going to minimize this so i can hit this button here or if you're on windows you can use control b to open and close this guy really quickly now, if you're on a Mac, the shortcut is displayed if you hover over this guy. And another shortcut there says Control plus Shift plus E. That's a different shortcut. Okay, so there's multiple ones. So I'm going to hit Control B to minimize this. And now let's talk about values and variables in JavaScript. So we're going to keep this lesson very, very simple for now because we're just getting started. So a value in JavaScript is just a piece of data. So again, to keep things simple, what I'm going to do as a piece of data, I'm just going to type out my name inside of double quotes. So just jump. So we have different data types and we'll learn more about the data types as we progress through the course. But right now, when you wrap a piece of text inside of double quotes or single quotes or back ticks, this is going to be known as a string. Okay. So you could do it like this or like this or with these back ticks like this. Okay. So these are all representing strings. So just the value of John. Okay. That's what I'm telling JavaScript that I have. Now, another value, you could use something like a number, okay? And if we type out a number here, we want it to be a number, then we don't use any type of quotes, okay? So just the number 21. Notice that these guys are different colors. So 21, which is a number, is purple. And then John, in each case, is a string, okay? So it's highlighted with yellow. Now, if I surrounded the number 21 with quotes, well, now JavaScript's going to treat this as a string. Okay, so now that we understand that each one of these guys represents a value, and you can change this up. You could say something like, this is Bob, and let's say this is Mary, just to use different names here. We're going to use something known as the console.log statement. Okay, this is built into JavaScript to view some simple output in our terminal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multi-line selection, which is built into VS Code. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, okay, on Windows. And I'm going to keep pressing with my mouse on each line. And you're going to see that a big, long cursor appears. Okay. So this is going to allow me to change multiple lines at once without going through and typing and typing and typing. Okay. So it allows me to do that there, but because these guys are different lengths, I have to close them out individually. Okay. So that's a bit annoying, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and do this. So now what's going to happen is when I run my program in the terminal, I'm going to see John. Bob, Mary, 21 as a number, and then 21 as a string, okay? So you'll see that the terminal is actually going to highlight these differently as well. So let's go ahead and open the terminal. So I'm just going to do this without the shortcut one last time. So I'm going to hit new terminal here. The shortcut for all these things, if you see me doing something really quickly with my keyboard, I'm just going right here, which is the shortcut. So control plus shift plus this backtick character. Okay, so you want to hit that and then I'm going to type clear here. Okay, and then to run your program, what you want to do is type node. Okay, then a space and then the name of the program. Okay, so what I'm running here is basics.js. If you don't type this correctly, you will get an error. Okay, and it's very frustrating when you first start when you're making typos, but you've got to type it exactly as I'm typing it. So node space, my file name is going to be basics.js. So that's what I'm typing. So go ahead and hit enter. Okay. And you're going to get your output there. So what we see is we have John, we have Bob, we have Mary, we have the number 21. Notice it's highlighted different. And then we have 21 as a string. So if you go back up here, again, it's in the order that's given. So John, Bob, Mary, 21 is a number, 21 is a string. John, Bob, Mary, 21 is a number, 21 is a string. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just clear this out and I'm going to close my terminal for now. All right, so what I want to do now is talk about the concept of a variable in JavaScript. So a variable, you can think about this as like a box or some sort of container where using a variable to store values is going to allow us to reuse the value over and over and over again in our program. So we just keep going back to the box and pulling that value out every time we need it. So this is helpful for us because if we need to change a value in multiple places in our program, using a variable will allow us to simply change the value in one place versus all that typing and aggravation of changing it in many, many places. So in JavaScript, there's going to be three ways that we declare a variable. We can use let, we can use const, and we can use var. 
So for this lesson, I'm just going to use the keyword let, okay, and we'll cover the other two shortly. All right, so what I'm going to do is just delete this real quick. I'm going to make a little comment here. So a comment is going to be something that's not read by your program, okay? So I'm going to put two forward slashes. This is for a single line comment, okay? And I'm just going to say declaring a variable like this, okay? And you don't need to do anything else. So this will not be read by your program. Okay, so it's just something that's there for you to reference later on. Maybe you're going to come back to your program six months from now and you want to remember what you were thinking. So I'm going to use let to declare a variable. So I'm going to type the keyword let, okay, followed by the variable name. Now, there are certain things that you can name a variable and certain things that you can't name a variable. So you can't use a reserved keyword. For example, I can't put let function and then say this is equal to, let's say, John. Okay, that's not going to work. What I need is a variable name that's going to start with a letter, a dollar sign, or an underscore. And I can't have anything other than a letter, a number, a dollar sign, or an underscore in this guy. Okay, so I can put numbers in the variable name, but it can't start with a number. So if I wanted to do something like first name, okay, like this, well, that's okay. But if I try to put a number in the front, let's say I put three, that's going to give me an error. Okay, so if you get something highlighting red, it depends on the theme you're using, but if it gets something highlighting red, it's telling you have some sort of error and you need to pay attention to that. So when you first start out, you might try to name something illegally, okay? And you'll get a syntax error if you try to run that. So I've called my variable name first name and notice how this first letter of the first word is lowercase, but the first letter of the second word is uppercase. So this is called the camel case notation. So let's say I had three words here. Let's say I put my first name. Well, now I would want to capitalize that F. So for the first letter of the first word, it's lowercase, okay? For the first letter of each additional word, it's uppercase. And then all the other letters are going to be lowercase. So this is the camel case notation. It's pretty standard in JavaScript. You want to understand this is how we do things so that when you're coming across code and when you're writing code yourself, you can adopt the standard. Okay, so let's go ahead and come over here. And I want you to notice that you have an equal sign. So in JavaScript, this is called the assignment operator. So this is going to assign the value here, which in this case is John, to this variable, my first name. Okay, so notice that this is surrounded by quotes. So this is telling me it's going to be a string. And I've finished this off with a semicolon. Now, you don't have to do this. The program will just run fine if I get rid of my semicolon but I like to put the semicolons in just for clarity, okay? So I'm going to save this, and what I wanna do is console.log. So now instead of console.logging John, okay, what I can do, I can console.log this guy, my first name, okay? And I'm gonna put semicolons on each one to stay consistent. And I'm gonna pop open my terminal now. Let's go ahead and pull this up here. So I'm going to clear this. Remember, you can use your up and down arrows to cycle through commands. And I'm going to run this and I get John and John again. Okay, so if we close this, where did that come from? The first one came from this. I'm just console.logging the value John. And the second one came from this. I'm console.logging the value John, but it's first going to my first name. Okay, and it's thinking about, okay, well, what's stored in there? Well, it's this string John. If I change this to, let's say, Mary, and I misspelled that, Okay, and I open my terminal again, I clear this and run this, I get John and John, and that's because I didn't save my program. Let's go back up here and save this. So let's try that again, clear this and run this. We get John and then Mary, okay? So you can imagine how advantageous it is to use a variable because, see, we had to change the name here. So if I had console.log all these different names, let's say I had 5,000 of them, okay? Well, if I had to go and change that 5,000 times, that'd be really annoying. But if I just reference the variable name, well, now I can just change it in one place, right? So for example, I can just do this multiple times. And if I open my console up and run through this, well, now I get all these ones. So if I go back here and let's say I change this from Mary to, I don't know, let's say Steve, for example, and let's save this, pull this back up here and clear this and run this. Well, now you see it changed it everywhere. Right? I didn't have to go back and say, update the text for Steve each time. Okay, I know this is a very simple example, but you can see that if you were using this on a massive program, 
where you were referencing this person's first name, then it would be much more useful to have this stored as a variable in case it changed later. All right, so what I wanna do now is go a little bit deeper into the topic of variables. So we already saw that we could declare a variable using the keyword let, but we also have the keyword const and we have the keyword var, okay? Although we don't use it anymore, you do need to understand what it does. So to start this lesson off, I'm just going to open my explore tab here, okay? And again, there's a shortcut for that. If you're on a Mac, just hover over that or it should give you the shortcut. If you're on Windows, you can hit Control and then B and it's going to toggle it back and forth, okay? So I'm going to click on this basics.js, which is a file we've been working on, okay? And then I'm just gonna get that Explorer window out of the way. All right, so what I wanna do now is just recap what we know about let before we go into const and var. So when you work with let and you want to declare a variable, you type the keyword let, and then you're gonna type your variable name. So I'm gonna do first name, and then you're gonna use the equal sign or the assignment operator in JavaScript, and then you're gonna put your value. So in this case, I'm going to use a string. So it's going to be my name surrounded by double quotes. Okay, so make sure that when you're using something as a string, that the quotes match. Remember, you can use double quotes, single quotes, or back ticks, but you don't wanna mix and match, okay? So that's gonna give me an error. You wanna make sure that if you start with double quotes, you end with double quotes. If you start with single quotes, you end with single quotes. You start with back ticks, you end with back ticks, so on and so forth. So right now, I've declared a variable first name, and I've assigned the value of John to that variable, okay? So what we wanna think about now is, let's dump this to the console. So I'm just going to do console.log, inside the parentheses, I'm gonna put the variable name. So let's stop for a minute and think about what JavaScript's gonna do. On the first line, we've declared a variable first name and we've assigned the value of John to it. So you can think about this as being a box or a container that's now holding a value inside of it of John. Then when we get to the console.log statement, it's looking for this variable first name. It finds it and it says, hey, what's the value there? The value is John. So that's what it's going to output to the console. So let's go ahead and view this in the terminal. So again, you can hit terminal, new terminal, or you can use your shortcut. And what I'm gonna do here is type out node space, the name of the file, basics.js, and hit enter. Okay, and I'm just gonna get John as an output. Okay, so that's right there. That's all I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and minimize this real quick. And I wanna show you something else you can do with let that we haven't talked about. If you need to change the value of your variable throughout the program, and you've declared the variable using let, you're able to do that. So what I can do is retype the variable name. So it's just first name equals, let's say I change my name to Steve, for example. And then if I console.log this first name variable, what's gonna happen is I'm first gonna get an output of John, okay? Then I'm gonna get an output of Steve. Okay, so what happens is JavaScript has changed the value or updated the value or the contents in that box. It's pulled John out and it's put Steve in, okay? So if we run this in the terminal real quick, let's go ahead and clear this and run this, we get John first and then Steve second, okay? So it's reading this from top to bottom. So another thing you need to know about let is if you try to reuse the keyword let, okay, it's gonna throw an error. So once you've declared the variable using let, you want to reassign a different value to that variable just with the variable name. So if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error, right? So you can see that it says syntax error identifier first name, which is a variable name, has already been declared. Okay, so you don't want to do that twice. So let's go ahead and clear this out and pop this over. And I'm just going to remove this let, okay? And I just wanna show you one more thing with let so that you understand this. So I'm gonna type let and then first name and I'm not gonna give it any value whatsoever. So let's say we console.log my first name variable now. What do you think I'm going to get? Well, you're gonna get a value of undefined. So let me explain what this is. When you declare a variable, but you don't give it a value, then what happens is you are gonna be automatically assigned a value of undefined for your variable, okay? So if you see undefined when you're working with something, you know that a variable was declared, okay, but it was never given a value. So let's pop this terminal open real quick and let's see this real quick. So we run this and we get undefined. Okay, and we'll talk more about this in the next section. Let's close this for now. Once you've declared the variable up there, you can then assign a value down here. So I can say John, for example, and if I console.log 
this first name variable. Well, now again, when I first started here, I declared the variable first name, but I didn't give it a value. So JavaScript said, hey, it's undefined. So when we console.log here from our line two, we're gonna get undefined. Then first name got assigned a value of John. Okay, so now we put John in the box. So when we console.log first name, the value of John is what's gonna come up on our screen. So let's go ahead and run this real quick and see that. So we get undefined and then John. All right, so now let's talk about the keyword const. So you use const when you don't want the value of the variable to change throughout your program. So you might have some constant, like let's say a lucky number. Let's go up here and just delete all this. So I'm gonna say const lucky number and set this equal to 21. Okay, so that's my lucky number. So let's say it's never gonna change for me. So I just put that there and I'm never gonna change it. So let's just go down here and console.log our lucky number variable. And of course, we're gonna get 21 in the console here. So we'll clear this and run this and we get 21, okay, as expected. But let's say I come here and I try to reassign a different value now. So let's say I put 13 here, okay? So now I'm saying, hey, lucky number, I want you to go into that box, okay? And I wanna pull out 21 and put 13 in. Well, because I declared lucky number with const instead of let, I'm not allowed to do that. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to get an error here. So we clear this and run this. It's gonna say type error assignment to constant variable. So why is this useful? Why would you not wanna be able to change a value? Well, it's pretty helpful because it can prevent you from making errors, okay? You can accidentally overwrite something, okay? A value that should have been the same. You might forget if you're writing a really long program or if you're working on a program with someone else, you might try to name something the same as somebody else, okay? And there's other ways to protect against this, but essentially if you put something down with const, it can't be changed. And if you try to change it, you're gonna get an error. So you're gonna know right away, hey, I made a mistake, okay? So in general, we're gonna use const as much as possible, unless we know in advance we're going to have to change the value, okay? So you'll see me use const a lot throughout this course, and you can always go back and update it from const to let if you need to. So that's the general rule. If you wanna use something and you don't know if it's gonna change, start out with const, and then if it does have to change, go back and update it to let. All right, so lastly, let's talk about declaring a variable using the keyword var. So you wanna just type var, okay, just like with the other ones. So we wanna type var, and then let's continue with first name. So first name, and again, this is gonna be John for me. And just like with let, I can reassign. So I can say first name is equal to, let's say, Steve. And it works the same way. So if I was to, let's say, console.log, this first name variable, okay? And I'll go ahead and copy that and cut this away and put that there. Well, if I run this, what I'm gonna get is John and Steve again. So no issues, it works the same, but here's a problem. Let's say I type var again. So I'm redeclaring the variable here. You're not gonna get an error like you would with let. So if you pop this open and clear this and run this, you get John and Steve, it doesn't throw an error, it doesn't care, it doesn't do anything, okay? So I don't wanna go too far into why using var is a bad practice. You need to really understand things about scope and functions and stuff we just haven't gotten to yet. So I wanna just leave that alone for now. I just want you to know that if you see var while you're working on older projects or older tutorials or older code bases, it's the old way to declare a variable. All right, so what I wanna do now is talk a little bit about data types in JavaScript. So JavaScript is what is known as a loosely typed or a dynamically typed language. So the variables in JavaScript are not directly associated with any particular value type, and a variable can be assigned and reassigned values of all types. So it's the value itself that has the type, not the variable. Okay, so I want you to remember that. It's the value itself that has the type, not the variable. So what I'm saying here is that when you assign a value to a variable in JavaScript, you don't need to specify the data type. What's gonna happen is JavaScript is automatically gonna determine the appropriate data type based on the value, okay? We don't have to do anything. Now, in the future, if you switch over to some other programming language, it happens to be a strongly typed language. In this case, the variables are going to be bound to specific data types. All right, so let's look at a few examples of data types in JavaScript. I'm gonna start out with a string. Okay, we've already worked with this before. But basically what I'll do is I'll declare a variable and I'm gonna use let because it's gonna change. So I'm gonna put let, let's just say my var to keep it simple. 
and I'll use the equals or again the assignment operator and I'm just going to wrap a number like three inside of double quotes. So right now I have the string three. Okay. So if I thought about the data type of that value, it's going to be a string because again, this guy is wrapped in quotes. Okay. We can see that. So one way you can check this is you can use console.log and inside the parentheses, you're going to type type of, okay, all lowercase. So it's right here for me. I can autocomplete. And then you're going to put a space, okay? And then you're going to put your variable name. So my var, okay? So what this is going to do is it's going to look inside my var and say, hey, what's the type of that value? And in this case, it's going to be a string. So it's going to output string to the console. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal. Okay, and remember when it first opens up, I'm just going to type clear to get rid of this. To run my file, I'm going to hit node space basics.js, hit enter, and you see that you get string right here. Okay, so that's from the type of. So let me minimize this. Okay, get that out of the way. And so if we change the value that's assigned to that variable, notice that this type of operator will give me something different. So now let's say we did my var. And let's set this equal to the number three. Okay, so I didn't surround it with quotes. It's just a number now. And so if I go back to my terminal, okay, and I run the program again, remember you can do this really quickly by hitting the up arrow. So we're going to clear it and then I'm going to run it and I'm going to get number now. So instead of string, I'm going to get number. And let me reduce the zoom on this a little bit. So I'm going to come down just one notch. Okay, so let me go ahead and clear this and let me minimize this. And let's talk about numbers in JavaScript because there's a lot to know here. When you work with numbers in other programming languages, you generally have to say, I have a decimal number or I have an integer. In JavaScript, you don't have to do that. So I can change my var to something like, let's say 3.579, okay? And if I run the program again, I'm still going to get number as a result, okay? Nothing changed. But again, if you switch over to some other type of language, you might have to say, hey, I have a floating point number or I have an integer or something like that. In JavaScript, you just have number. Now, additionally, we also have a data type known as a Boolean and the value for a Boolean can only be a true or a false. Okay, so this is used to help us make decisions in our program. Let's kind of change things up. Let's say something like const and we'll say is drinking age, something like this. And right now we'll just set it to true, okay? And so it's true, it's not surrounded by quotes or anything. If you surrounded true with quotes, it would be a string. But if you have true, not surrounded by quotes, it's a Boolean, okay? So if I do my console.log, again, if I use my type of operator, and I say is drinking age, if I put that in there, again, what this is gonna do, it's gonna look inside is drinking age, what's the value there? Well, it's true, true is a Boolean, okay? So that's what it's going to give me as a result. So let's go ahead and open up our console and let's clear this and then we can run it and we get Boolean, okay, as our data type. Okay, let's minimize this once more. All right, now let's cover undefined and null. These are a bit confusing when you first come across them. We already know that if we declare a variable, let's say let my var, and we don't give it a value, JavaScript is already going to assign the value of undefined for us. Okay, so it does that automatically. We don't need to do anything. So if I console.log my var here, again, the value stored in there is undefined. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal. Let's run this and we're going to get undefined, okay? But what is a little confusing here, let me just kind of drag this down just a little bit. We'll come back to it in a second. If I did console.log and I did type of, and then my var, I'm going to get undefined as well, okay? It's gonna show up in a different color because one is saying, hey, what is the value stored in my var? Well, the value is undefined. The other one is, hey, what's the type of the value stored in my var? So the value stored in my var is undefined. The type of that is undefined as well, okay? So that is a bit confusing. Let's go ahead and run this and you'll see undefined as the value and then undefined as the type. Again, notice they're showing up in different colors. So let's go ahead and clear this. And now let's talk a little bit about null, okay? So null is quite confusing, but null is something you have to do, okay? You have to assign the value of null. It won't happen automatically. So for example, if I come up here and I say my var is equal to null, and then I console.log, 
we're going to do my var. Okay. And I'm just going to comment this out for right now, because this is going to give us something that we need to think about. And let's come back up here and just put a semicolon. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to get from this line two undefined and from line four, I'm going to get null. So let's pop open the terminal, let's go ahead and run this, we get undefined and then null. Okay. So where might this come in handy? Well, let's say that you have a little form that you want people to fill out and it's got the person's name, address, phone number, all kinds of contact details. Okay. When the page first loads, all the values would be empty, right? Because the person hasn't had a chance to interact with anything. So you might have a variable for the name, a variable for the email address, so on and so forth. So those might all be undefined when it starts. But as the person interacts with things, they're going to fill some stuff out. Okay. And then some things they might not have. So they might not have a phone. They might not have an email address. So they might mark not available. So you might say, Hey, this person didn't skip this field. Okay. Cause if they skipped it, it would still be undefined, but they didn't skip it. They specifically said they didn't have it. They marked it not available. So you might use null. Okay. To differentiate between the situation where they skipped it or forgot about it. Okay. And the situation where they don't have it and they specifically told you, Hey, I don't have this. Okay. So now what I want to do, let me just erase this real quick. Okay. And I want to do type of real quick. And there's an error that's going to happen here. So you might expect that if I did type of this, my var again, it's looking at the type of null. So we would expect that the type of null is null, right? Because the type of undefined was undefined, but this actually will not come up as null. It will come up as something called an object. Now, we haven't talked about objects yet. We will shortly, but basically this is, you could say a bug or an error. It has something to do with the beginning of JavaScript. You can Google search why this is the case, but it's not going to be fixed. Okay. So if we pop open the terminal and we run this, we get object. Okay. And again, this is some sort of bug. So you would expect that to be null, but it's actually object. So let's go ahead and clear this. So as of right now, there are a total of eight data types. We've covered five of them only. Okay. These are the five that we're going to work with most immediately. So we talked about strings. We talked about numbers. We talked about booleans. We talked about undefined. We talked about null. We did not cover something known as symbol. We did not cover something known as big int, and we did not cover objects. So the symbol, the big int, and the objects, we're going to talk about these more as we progress through the course. For right now, you just need to know that all the types except for objects define immutable values. Okay. These are the, what we call primitive values. Okay. So when you say it's a primitive value, it means that they're immutable or they can't be changed. So I just want to give you a quick example of this. Let's say that we come back up here and I say, let my string be equal to money. For example, what I can't do in JavaScript is tell it to change the first letter of this string to let's say H. Okay. I can't say, well, instead of money, I want honey. So just change the first letter. I can reassign. I can say my string is equal to honey like this, but there's no way for me to go in there and say, Hey, I just want to change the first letter of this. So it's very important to understand that these primitive values are immutable or something that we can't change in JavaScript. All right. What I want to do now is talk a little bit about string concatenation and template literals. So string concatenation happens when we combine two or more smaller strings into one large string. So this is a very common task when you're working with JavaScript or even other programming languages. So let's start out today with the older way of doing this. This is using the plus operator. So let's say we did something like const and I'll go first name, first name, and I'll set this equal to John. And then I'll go const last name and I'll set this equal to green. And then we could do something like const, let's do like a simple greeting. So greeting, we'll say hi, comma, I am, and then you have that. So let's go with const, we'll say full greeting now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap these guys together. So I'm going to start with greeting. Okay. That variable and the value there is hi, I am that string. Okay. So then I'm going to use the plus operator and I'm going to slap John. Okay 
to the end of that. So I'm going to use first name. Okay. And then I'm going to use the plus operator again, and I'm going to slap last name. Okay. To the end of that. So basically this plus operator, when you're working with strings, it allows you to slap one string directly to the end of the other. Okay. Now, because we don't have any spaces in here, you'll notice that there's no spaces. So you're going to see hi, I am, and then you're going to have John, and then you can have green all slapped directly together. Okay. So no spaces. So let's go ahead and console.log this full greeting. Okay. And we'll see what we have here. And then I'll show you how to fix the spacing issue. So let's go ahead and clear this and let's run our program. So again, node space basics.js hit this, we get hi, comma, I am John Green. So notice how there's no space there, okay? So to fix this, let me just minimize this real quick. To fix this, you can put plus here, okay? And you can put plus here. And in between there, what we're gonna do is we're going to put a string here that just contains a space, okay? So that's all we're going to do. So now if we go ahead and run this guy again, Let's clear it out and run it. We get hi, comma, I am John Green. And notice the spaces have been put in for us. Now, this is the old way to do it. And it's rather inconvenient because you have to keep track of the spaces and it can get annoying. And I'm going to show you some other benefits to this. But basically what you want to do here is you want to switch over to using something known as backticks or creating a template literal. So what I'm going to do, and I'll just show you with another variable, I'll say const full greeting let's go to is equal to, I'm gonna use backticks here, okay? Every time I have a variable that I wanna reference, I'm just going to use a dollar sign and curly braces, okay? And I'm type the variable name inside of there. That's all I need to do. You can put spaces in there, it's going to read it exactly as you put it. So then I'm gonna put dollar sign, curly braces, and then first name, and then dollar sign, curly braces, and then last name, okay? So because there are spaces in here, okay, you see this space here, and you see this space here, JavaScript's going to interpret that exactly as I gave it. Okay. And if I console.log this, okay, let me just go ahead and put this in as two. You're going to see you get the same thing. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this and we get hi, I am John Green in each case. But you can see that this way is much, much simpler. I don't have to think about putting this plus and then the string that's just a space. Okay. I don't have to think about that. This just does it automatically. So there are more benefits to this. Before I move on into that, I want to talk about the fact that this is a newer feature. And before you use it, you want to make sure that whatever browser you're developing for, or it could be browsers in every case you're trying to be as inclusive as possible. If you have to support a browser that doesn't support this, you need to think about the workarounds. Okay. So you want to go to a site called Can I Use? And basically, this is a site that tells you if a feature is going to be available. Okay. So this is ES6 template literals or template strings. Okay. And basically, this is when we use the backticks like we just saw. Okay, so this is going to list all the different browsers. So you see with Internet Explorer, it's highlighted as red. Okay, so it's not supported. But where you see the green or especially the dark green, okay, that tells you you have like full support. Okay, so you can go through and figure out, okay, do I need to support Internet Explorer? Well, if I do, it might not be a good idea to use them. But if I don't have to support Internet Explorer, well, then I'm free to use these backticks as much as possible. Now, let's talk about some other benefits here. Okay, and I'm just going to get rid of all this. We don't need it anymore. Let's say that you're working with a piece of text or string that has something like an apostrophe in it. So let's say we do const my string and I'm going to set this equal to, and I'm going to use single quotes for this example, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm just going to say this doesn't work very well. Okay. So you'll notice that I have the end of my string here and the end of the beginning of my string here. But here, what JavaScript thinks is that because this guy matches what's in the beginning, that I'm trying to end my string, okay? It thinks that I'm doing that. So what I can do to get around this, I can either escape the character by putting a backslash here before the character occurs, okay? That allows me to escape it. Or I can get rid of these guys all together, okay? And I can just use the backticks, okay? So I can do that. You can also use, if you wanted to, let's go ahead and do this as another example. So let's copy this and I'll say this is my string two. Another way you can get around this, you can use the double quotes, okay? And if you use double quotes, you can use single quotes inside, okay? It's trying to end your string with what it started with. So if it starts with double quotes, the second it gets the double quotes, it's going to end the string, okay? If it starts with single quotes, the second it sees single quotes, it's going to end the string. So both of these would print the same. So let's go ahead and console.log them. 
we'll just do my string and then my string two. You put a comma between these guys and it's going to just print out for you on the same line. So it's nice and easy. So let's go ahead and open this up, clear this out, and we'll go ahead and run this guy. So you get, this doesn't work very well. This doesn't work very well on the same line because we separated these guys with a comma. Okay, let me clear this out real quick and minimize this. So let me erase this now. And let's talk about one more feature of this. So let's say I did something like const my string and I set this equal to, let's say I was using double quotes, okay? And let's say I wanted to say something like, hi, I am John, comma, and I am A. And then for emphasis, let's say that I wanted to put web developer on another line, okay? So you might think that you could just hit enter here, but that's gonna give you an issue, okay? So you can't just do that. So what you would have to do, if you're using these double or single quotes, you'd have to put a escape sequence. So in other words, you wanna use your backslash and then the N, okay? So this tells you you want this on a new line, okay? And if you don't want this to have a space, you'd move this over, okay? And then what I wanna do is just console.log, this my string variable and see what we have here. So let's run this and you get, hi, I am John and I am a web developer. Okay, so you see that this web developer comes on another line. So this was the old way to do this, but we have a better way now. We can use the backticks, okay? So I can just say const my string two and I can use backticks and just say, hi, I am John and I am a, and what I'm gonna do is just hit enter. Oh, and that auto completed something that it shouldn't have. So let me hit enter there. And then I am a, and I meant to put, let me do this one more time. I am a web developer like this. So because I'm using the back ticks here, when I hit enter, it's going to preserve that. And if I console.log this my string two, okay, variable, then I'm going to get the exact same thing, but it's a lot easier to do. So hi, I am John and I am a web developer. So that's just a few things, a few advantages to using these back ticks versus using double or single quotes. We'll see this a lot as we progress through the course. All right, so what I wanna do now is focus a bit more on the addition operator in JavaScript. We're gonna see some strange things that are gonna happen because of the type coercion. And so we already saw that the addition operator can be used to concatenate strings, or this just means to join strings together. So let's quickly recap this with an example. I'm gonna go const. And I'm going to do first name again, and I'm just going to set that to John. And let's go const last name, and let's set this equal to green. And then let's go const city. And right now I'm in Irvine, so let's put that, okay? And then we can set up a little greeting. So let's go const, and we'll go greeting. And of course, we can use backticks. It would be much easier to use backticks. You wouldn't have to worry about the space. But for right now, I'm going to use this plus operator because we're specifically going to work with this in this lesson. So I'm going to put hi, comma, I am. I'm going to put a space here. Then plus, I'm going to put my first name variable. Then plus, I need a space here, okay? Then plus, I'm going to put something like, well, I need my last name. So let's put last name. And then plus, I'll put a little sentence here. And I'm going to put a space here to start. So, and I live in, I'll put a space here. And then plus city, okay? And then plus, you want a period. So you see how much work this is. If I was using the back ticks, I wouldn't need to worry about all these spaces and stuff. I could just type it. And then anytime I had a variable I want to reference, I use the dollar sign in the curly braces, okay? But we've already seen that. I'm just demonstrating this because we're going to work with the plus operator. So let's just quickly console.log our greeting variable and see what we get. I'm going to pop open my terminal and I'm going to go ahead and run my file and I get, hi, I am John Green and I live in Irvine. Okay, so nice and simple. Let's minimize this. Okay, so now that we understand about the string concatenation with the plus operator, let's look quickly at adding two numbers using the plus operator and then I'll get into the type coercion. So let's say you had something like const Let's just do number one. And for right now, let's set this equal to nine plus three, okay? So we'll talk more about the order of operations or the operator precedence in a future lesson. For right now, you just need to know that what happens here is JavaScript looks to evaluate what's on the right side of this equal sign or this assignment operator first. So it says, hey, what is nine plus three? That's 12. So then it assigns that value to our variable number one. So if we go console.log and we do our number one variable, okay? Let me pop the terminal back open. Let me clear this out and run it. We get 12, 
Okay, so that's as expected, no problems there. But what I wanna do here, let's delete that and let's come down here and set up another variable. So I'm gonna go const number two and I'm gonna set this equal to three, okay? So now I'm gonna go const sum and I'll say this is equal to number one plus number two. Okay. And if we do this, if we console.log the sum variable, we know that we're going to get 12. Okay. So I just want to show you that real quick. So let's go ahead and clear this and run it again. And we get 12. Okay. As expected. So no problem so far. Now, what I want to do here is just focus a little bit on something known as the type coercion. Since JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, the values can be converted between different types automatically when we apply operators to values of different types. So what I'm going to do is throw a third number in here. So I'm gonna go const number three, and I'm gonna set this equal to five, okay? And I'm gonna update this over here. So put plus number three now, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is change this first number into a string, okay? So if I console.log this sum variable now, what do you think is gonna happen? Do you think that you're gonna get nine plus three, which is 12, plus five, which is 17, okay? Is that what you think is gonna happen? Well, actually what's gonna happen, let me run this real quick and then I'll explain it. So let's clear this and run this and you get 935, so 935. Notice the color, it's a string, okay? So let's minimize this and think about what's going on here. So when you look at the right side of this equal sign or this assignment operator, you start with the number one, which has a value of nine and it's the string nine, okay? So let me just put a comment here. This is a string, okay? And then this guy is a number, we know that. And then this guy is a number, we know that. Okay, so let's focus in on this. So we have number one, which is a string, added to number two, which is a number. Well, what happens is JavaScript has to make a decision because you have two different data types. One's a string, one's a number. So JavaScript decides to convert this number to the string, okay, to the string, and I misspelled that, so to the string three, okay? So now they're gonna concatenate strings. It has the string nine and the string three. If I added those two guys together with the plus sign, it would be string concatenation, I'd have 93. Then it does it again, okay? So it has 93 now, it adds it to the number five by first converting this guy to the string five, okay? And then it does string concatenation, so you get nine, three, and then five. So 935 as a string. So there's ways to fix these things, and I'll talk about that towards the end. But right now, we just need to understand that we're getting a string as a result. So I can even do the type of here, operator to prove this. And just to further cement this, you can do type of. And then what I'll do is inside the parentheses, I'll do nine and then plus three like this, okay? And then we'll also do, we'll just do type of and we'll do nine plus three. So this first guy, this sum variable should be a string. The second guy would be a string. It's the same process. And the third guy would be a number, okay? Just for reference sake. Let's go ahead and pop open the terminal, clear this. And then we'll go ahead and run this and we get string, string, and number, okay? So the first guy is a string because it's the sum variable. We're looking at the type of the value there, which in this case is the string 935. The second guy is a string because I have the string nine being added to the number three. Again, you get the type coercion there. So this changes to the string three. So you'll get 93 as a string there if you were to log that value to the console. Then here you have nine plus three, they're both numbers. So you stay as a number, the result is 12. Okay, so let's erase this real quick. So let me just change this real quick to a number. And I'm going to update this and say, this is a number. And I'm going to update this and say, this is a string. And let's go ahead and get rid of this part here. So let's take this out. Okay, so now I'm going to update this down here to be a string. And I want you to think about what the result is for sum. So now I'm going to just console.log sum, and we still have the type of there, so we'll do both of them. But before I run it, what do you think is gonna happen? You have the number one, which is nine, the number nine, plus you have the number two, which is three, the number three, so nine plus three is 12. So this part right here should give you 12. So then plus you have your number three, number three is the string five. So now it's going to do your type coercion, okay? So you're gonna have the 12, okay, the result of nine plus three, plus your five, that string. So if I took 12 and I slapped the five on the end of it, again, concatenating strings there, I would get 125. So let's go ahead and run this guy, clear it out. 
and run this and we do get 125 and then string. Okay, so that's just a few simple examples. I wanna show you one other example with a Boolean value. Again, these are just to get us started to think about things because as you progress through this course, you're gonna see lots of examples where you need to deal with type coercion and you need to be aware of it in your own programming because it can cause a lot of errors and bugs. So let's do something like const number one is equal to 12 and then const Boolean one and we'll set this equal to true, okay? Remember a Boolean value is either true or false, okay? It's one or the other. So what would happen if I did const sum is equal to number one plus boolean one and I console.log the sum variable. So what's gonna happen? I have 12 and then I have true. Well, what's gonna happen is JavaScript's gonna coerce the true into a one, okay? So false will be coerced into a zero and true will be coerced into a one. And we'll revisit this later on. But for right now, we should know that we would get 12 plus one, which is 13. So let's pop this open. So we'll clear this and run this and we do get 13. So if I push this down, let's say I change this to false. Well, we would have 12 plus zero, which is now going to be just 12. So clear this and run this, we get 12. So lastly, let's quickly think about one way that we can deal with this situation. Suppose that we had something like the number 12 as a string. And let's say we had this as just a number five and I'm gonna change this to number two. And let's just go ahead and update this to number two, okay? So how could we deal with this situation where we're getting a string, but we need to add it as a number? Well, there's a couple of different methods that are built into JavaScript. We'll look at parse int and parse float later. For right now, I'm just gonna use number. Notice how the N is a capital N, okay? This should be able to pop up for you in Visual Studio Code. If you put a lowercase N there, it won't work, okay? So make sure it's a capital N. Then you're going to surround this guy with parentheses. So now what's going to happen is JavaScript's going to take what's inside the parentheses and try to convert it into a number for you. Then once that happens, we'll have this number one, okay, which is 12 now as a number, plus number two, which is five now as a number. So we should get 17. So if we console.log our sum variable now, okay, we should get 17. So let's go ahead and run this and we get 17. And you can even look at the type of here. So let's do type of, and we should see it as a number right? because JavaScript did this for us because we used our number method. So we do get number there. Now, one last thing about working with this guy, in some cases you might try to convert something into a number and it's not able to be converted. So let's say I wrote out the word seven. Okay, we know this is the number seven written in a word form. Well, if JavaScript sees this, it's not gonna know that, hey, I want the number seven. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with something known as not a number. We'll cover this later on in the course, but for right now, you would see that the result of this would be not a number, okay? So what happens is you get not a number as the result from this, and then not a number plus five would give you not a number. So let's just quickly see this real quick. So let's clear it, let's run it, you get not a number. And if you did type of here, so type of, what do you expect to get? So let's go ahead and open this, clear it and run it, and you get number, which is a bit surprising. All right, so now what I wanna do is go over the arithmetic operators we're gonna use while programming in JavaScript. So once again, let's just start out with addition. We're already pretty familiar with this. So let's just set up three variables. I'm just gonna go const number one. Let's just set this equal to five and then const number two. Let's set this equal to six and I'm gonna hit six there and then const number three, let's set this equal to 11. Okay, so we know that we can do something like const sum is equal to number one plus number two, and then plus your number three. Okay, so if we were to console.log the sum variable, we all know we would get five plus six, which is 11, and then 11 plus 11, which is 22. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop open the terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and use my up arrow to run this and we do end up with 22 as a result. Okay, so that's as expected. We also saw that the type coercion, if we were to convert one of these guys into a string, would give us some weird results, right? So let's just quickly cover that real quick. If I make this guy into a string, okay, in the middle, you have the number five here that gets added to the string six. So JavaScript will convert the number five into the string five. It'll do string concatenation, and you'll end up with the string 56. 
So let me just put a comment here. You would end up with the string 56 at this point. And then when you get here, you'd have the string 56 plus the number 11, okay? So then again, it would do string concatenation because it would convert 11 into a string and you would get the string, you would get the string 5,611 as your final result. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. And let me clear this out and run this and you get 5,611 again as a string. So it's very important to understand the type coercion that happens, especially when you work with the addition operator. So let's move on and talk about the subtraction operator. And to do that, let me just erase all of these. We'll use three new numbers. So let's do const number one. Let's do something like 20 and then const number two. Let's do 11 and then const number three. Let's do, I don't know, something like 14. And you can use any numbers you want. It doesn't really matter. And they can also be positive or negative numbers. And I'll show you that in a moment. So to do the subtraction operator, I just use the minus sign. So I can do something like const difference is equal to, let's do number one, okay? And then minus number two. So because 20 minus 11 is a positive number, you would get nine. If I subtracted away 14, I'd end up with a negative five. So let's not do that just yet. I'll show you that in a moment. So console.log, we're gonna do the difference variable. And we should get 20 minus 11, which is not. So let's pop open the terminal, clear this and run this and we do get not. Okay, so that's as expected. Now, what do you think is gonna happen if I change this to a string? We saw that type coercion when we were working with the addition operator, but now we have the subtraction operator. So when you work with that plus or that addition operator in JavaScript, remember you also have string concatenation along with adding numbers. There's two roles there. Well, with the minus sign, you're really just using that to subtract numbers. So what happens is JavaScript is now going to decide to change this guy from a string into a number, okay? And so you're gonna get the same result. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and let's run this and you still get the number nine. Notice how it's highlighted in yellow. It's telling you it is a number. Okay, and you can even do the type of to prove that to yourself. So let's control C to copy this and let's do type of here. And I just wanna show you real quick, if you run this now, you do get number here as the type of. Okay, so now that we understand the type coercion that's gonna happen with minus, this would apply to multiplication and division as well. I'll show you examples of this. You can also, let me just change this back to just the number 11 and let me delete this comment so this is gone. You can also end up with negative numbers. So let's say I come through here and I put minus number three. Okay. And what's going to happen is we'll talk more about this as we progress, but we're going to use something called the order of operations. So because it's just subtraction here, it goes left to right. It starts with number one, which is 20. It subtracts away the number two variable, which is 11. Okay. So that's 20 minus 11, which is nine. And then it subtracts away the number three variable, which is 14. Okay. So nine minus 14 is negative five. So if we go ahead and pop open the terminal, clear this and run this, we get negative five. Okay, so you can get negative values here. You can also make something into a negative. So let's say I put a minus in front of that 14 there that changes this guy into a negative 14. So what's gonna happen here, in case you're bad at math, the number one is 20, the number two is 11. So let's think about this. You have 20 minus 11, which gives me nine. Okay, so that's kind of the first step. The second step now is going to be nine minus a negative 14, okay? In case you don't know this, when you subtract away a negative, it's like adding a positive. So this is the same as saying I have nine plus 14, which is going to give me a result of 23, okay? So if we go ahead and run this now, let's go ahead and clear this and run this, we do get the number 23. Okay, so that's all as expected. So now what I wanna do is move on and talk about multiplication. Okay, so let's do some smaller numbers here since we're working with multiplication. So I'm gonna go const, I'm gonna go number one is equal to, let's do something like five and then const number two. Let's set this equal to four and then const number three. Let's set this equal to three. Okay, so if I wanna get the product or the result from multiplying these three numbers, I can do something like const product is equal to, so I would take the first number, so number one, and I'm gonna arrow up so I can use this guy here. And then I'm gonna use the star symbol, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to be my multiplication operator, okay? And then I'm gonna do number two, okay? And then I'm gonna hit this again, and I'm gonna do number three, okay? So this is just the way we multiply numbers in a 
elementary math course, you might see the X symbol, the time symbol like this. Then as you get closer to algebra and actually as you get into algebra, this is replaced with a dot or sometimes we put numbers in parentheses to imply multiplication. But in JavaScript, this is how you can multiply two numbers together using this star symbol. Okay, so let's go down here and just console.log our product variable now, okay? And we're gonna have five times four, which is 20 times three, which is 60 as a result. Let's pop this open, clear this, and we'll run this and we do get 60, okay? And again, the type coercion works the same way. If I convert one of these to a string, okay, then JavaScript, again, because there's no string concatenation here, it's going to say I have five the number times four the string. I'm going to convert four the string into a number. And so you will get no change in the result here. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this. And you get 60 again. Okay, so again, you have to understand the type coercion and the differences between addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, let's say I put something in here like four. Okay, the, the word for, what would happen? Well, remember we have that not a number. Okay, if I pop this open and run this, you get not a number. Because it's trying to say, hey, I wanna do some type coercion here. Four is not something I can convert into a number. So I have the number five times this word for, which I can't convert and do anything with. So I just get a result of not a number. And then once I have not a number times this number three, it's still not a number. Okay, so if you end up with not a number as a result of one of your calculations, you need to go back and check what you're working with. Okay, so let's now go into division and let's erase this. And I'll start with some other numbers. So we have const and let's just go number one. And I'm just going to set this equal to something easy. So let's do 20 and then const number two. I'm going to set this equal to five. And I'm picking these numbers because 20 divided by five is exactly four, right? There's no remainder. So let's do const. We'll do sorry, this is quotient is what this should be. And we'll say this is equal to number one. Okay. And then you're going to use the slash or the forward slash. So this is your divided by or your division operator. And then you have your number two here. Okay. So this is going to give me a result of 20 divided by five, which is four. So console.log my quotient variable. And that's not what I wanted. And let's go ahead and run this. So pop this open, clear this, and let's run this and we get four. Okay, so that's as expected. The type coercion here again works the same if I was to convert this into a string. So let's say I made this the string five and you were to run this, you would get the exact same thing. Again, it's the same reason. If it comes across this string five and this number 20 and it's got the division operation, well, it's gotta make a decision. It says, hey, I can't really do anything useful with the string five. So let me convert this into the number five and then I can do 20 divided by five and that's four. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the exponentiation operator. This one is a bit newer. All right, for exponentiation, let's go ahead and do const number one and I'll set this to five and then const, I'll do exponent. And we can do one at the end, it doesn't matter. We'll set this equal to two, okay, something small. And then we'll go const my power is equal to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take five, or actually I need the variable number one, which is five as the value. And then I'm gonna hit double star, and then I'm gonna hit exponent one, okay? So this is the same thing if I, as if I did five raised to the power of two. Okay, so that's all it's doing. It's taking this first guy you have here and raising it to this second guy here. So five to the power of two. So if I console.log this, this my power variable, I should get five squared, which is 25. So let's pop this open and let's go ahead and run this. And we do get 25. Now, this is kind of a newer way to do this. So again, we can come to can I use.com and we have this exponentiation filled in here. And you can see all the different places where it's supported. You can see there's no support for Internet Explorer. So again, you wanna keep these things in mind when you're using new features. Okay, so another way to do this, and let me just do this real quick. We'll go const my power, and I'm just gonna call this two. I'm gonna say is equal to, and we'll learn more about this later, but we're gonna put math with a capital M, okay? Capital M dot P-O-W, okay? And inside the parentheses here, the first number is going to be your base. So in this case, it's going to be five, or we could put number one, it doesn't matter. And then the second one is going to be two. That's our exponent. Okay, so I'm going to put exponent one. And what's going to happen here is we'll get the same result. So this is the older way to do this. If you wanted to be supported in all the browsers, this should be supported in pretty much everything because this has been around forever. So we can go something like console.log. And we'll do my power two. And you're going to see that you're going to end up with the exact same 
result. You should get 25. So let's clear this and let's run this and we get 25 again. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is going to be the remainder operator. Okay, so this one is probably the most confusing for new programmers to understand. In other programming languages, they have something that's called a modulus. The remainder operator is very, very similar, okay? It's gonna give you the same result if everything is positive, but if there are negative numbers involved, then it won't, okay? And I'll show you an MDN article. I'll even link that in the description so you can read more about it if you want. But basically we can say something like const, let's do number one is equal to, let's do nine. And then const number two, let's do something like four. If I divide nine by four, I'm gonna get 2.25 on a calculator, okay? But before we learned how to work with these decimals, we would get something like two with a remainder of one, right? Because if I take four and I times it by two, I get eight, and there's one more to get to nine, okay? So in other words, if I did nine divided by four, I would get two with a remainder of one. So the remainder operator is gonna give me this remainder part right here, just the one, okay? So if there's no remainder, you get a result of zero. So let's see a few examples of this. So let's do something like const remainder is equal to, let's go ahead and do number one, and then I'm gonna use the percentage symbol. Again, this has nothing to do with taking a percentage. It is the remainder operator. Okay, so this is then number two we're gonna put here, and it should give me a result of one. So let's go console.log, and we're gonna put remainder in there. So let's go ahead and pop this open, clear this, and run this, and we get one. Okay, if I come up here and change this to eight, well, now we have eight divided by four, which is exactly two. So the remainder is zero. Okay, so let's pop this back open, clear this and run this, you get zero. All right, what I wanna do now is continue to talk a little bit about math operations in JavaScript. And specifically here, we're gonna focus on something called operator precedence, or in your math class, you think about this as the order of operations. So if we're faced with multiple operations in a row, how does JavaScript know which operation to perform in which order? Well, basically you're gonna use the PEMDAS, okay, from your math class. Remember the PEMDAS, I'm gonna write this out. So PEMDAS, most people remember this by saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, so that's a little mnemonic device you can use for that. But there's some key things to understand about PEMDAS. The P stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. Okay, so any grouping symbols that you'd have. Then the E stands for exponents, okay? So this could also be taking the square root of something. So this would be the next level of priority. Then here's where it gets tricky. You have M that comes before D, but the M and the D have the same priority level. So multiplication and division are the same level of priority. They are worked left to right, okay? And then you have the A and the S. So this is addition and subtraction. These have the same level of priority. They're worked left to right. So let's look at a quick example. We'll do something like const result. We'll set this equal to 20. Let's go divided by 10 and then times five. So again, if you remember PEMDAS and you're not clear about this rule, you might think that you would multiply here. So you would do 10 times five first before you divide. Okay, but this is not actually the case. Okay, what you would see here because multiplication and division have the same level of priority, 20 will be divided by 10 first. So let's just write out these steps. 20 would be divided by 10 first, and this is gonna be equal to two. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna have two times five. Okay, and this is gonna give us a result of 10. So to see this, let's go ahead and console.log our result variable. Okay, and let's go over here and I'm gonna pop open my terminal. And let's go ahead and clear this. And there was nothing to clear, I shouldn't have done that. And let's go ahead and run this. So it's node space basics.js and we get 10 as a result. Okay, so as expected. So let me erase this and bring this up here. So what would we do if we wanted to actually do the multiplication first? Because in some situations you'll want to do something first so you'll have to override what's written in the JavaScript. And you can do this by placing these guys inside of a set of parentheses. So now because parentheses has the highest level of priority, it's going to execute 10 times five first. So here we would do 10 times five first, which gives me 50, okay? And then I would have 20 divided by 50, which is gonna give me 0.4, okay? You could say 0.4 if you wanted to really emphasize the fact that you have a decimal there. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal 
and see this real quick. And we do get 0 0.4 or just 0.4. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this real quick. And let's start with a fresh example now. Let's say we do something like const result, and we set this equal to 10 minus 20 plus 5. So again, when you think about addition and subtraction, they have the same level of priority, okay? So we would subtract and add moving from left to right. So I would start here with 10 minus 20. I would start here with 10 minus 20, and that would give me a negative 10, okay? And then next, I would do what? I would do negative 10 plus 5, which would give me a negative 5. So again, if I console.log my result variable, what am I going to get? Let's go ahead and pop this open, and I'm going to clear it and run it. We do get negative 5, okay, as expected. But again, if you did this incorrectly, if you said, well, A comes before S in PEMDAS, you would think about 20 plus 5 doing that first. That would be 25. So let me just notate these steps. So you would have 20 plus 5 first. That would give me 25. And then you would have 10 minus 25, which would now give you negative 15, okay? So if we want to get that result, again, what we have to do is override what's written into JavaScript. So we would need to wrap this inside of a set of parentheses to give it a higher level of priority so it's executed first. And now what we'll see is we get negative 15 as a result. So let's pop this open and run this. And we do get negative 15. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just do one long example, just so we get some practice. So let's do something like 24 divided by, I'm going to put negative 3 in here, times 2, and then I'm going to do plus 3, and then I'm going to do the exponentiation operator, so it's double star, and then 2, and then times 2, okay? So let me write this out here. This is a bit confusing because people see this and they don't know what it means. Again, this is the exponentiation operator. It's just like having 3 raised to the power of two. Okay. So you can make that clear in your head. So let's think about the order of operations and what's going to happen first. So let me just erase this part. The highest priority is what's inside of parentheses. So inside of parentheses, we have negative three times two. So if we do negative three times two, we're going to get a result of negative six. Okay. So I would replace that with negative six. And now I would have 24 divided by negative six plus three, and then this is raised to the power of two, okay, and then times two. So when we think about what has the next highest level of priority, it would be to work with the exponents here. So we have three raised to the power of two, that's going to give me nine, right? So we would say that this is 24 divided by negative six plus, again, three raised to the power of two is going to be nine, okay? And then you have times two here. So now what will we get? Well, we have division, we have addition, and we have multiplication. Division and multiplication have a higher priority than addition, but division and multiplication occur on the same priority level, so we work them left to right. So because the division occurs to the left of the multiplication, it's done first. So 24 divided by negative 6 would be negative 4, and then you'd have plus 9, and then times 2, okay? And then lastly, we would have what? We would have multiplication and addition, so we would multiply first, and then we would add. So we would do 9 times 2 first, so that's 18. So you'd have negative 4 plus 18. And then to finish this up, you would have negative 4 plus 18, which is going to be 14. Okay, so if we console.log this result, let's go ahead and clear this out. And let's run this now. And we do, in fact, get 14. Okay, so we get our expected result. All right, so now I want to head over to MDN. This is a great resource for anything JavaScript related. So I'm on the page that's titled Operator Precedence. I'll leave a link for this in the description. So I just want to scroll down here a little bit. Okay, this is going to give you all the different rules. We haven't seen a lot of this stuff yet, so I don't want to go through everything. I just want to come down to this table, okay? So the table gives you the order from highest, which is 21, to lowest, which is 1, okay? So you see the grouping here is with parentheses, and you see that as the highest priority level. So the precedence, the number there is 21. Okay, then if you come down here, forget about all these things, we'll talk about them as we progress through the course, you see that exponentiation, okay, has the next highest priority level when we're thinking about math. Then you see that multiplication and division are below exponentiation, and you can see here that they're worked left to right, okay? Then we come down here, we see addition and subtraction. Again, they're the same priority level, they're worked left to right. And I want to show you one other thing. We're going to get to these things later on, but you see the assignment operator has a very low priority level. 
it's assigned the number of three, okay? So we've talked about the fact before that when you have this assignment operator here, it works the stuff on the right side of it first. Once it's gotten that value, then it assigns that value to the variable, okay? So this guy here has a very low priority level. Okay, so let's do a quick little exercise. And what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. This is a pretty common task. So what you can do is head over to rapid tables, okay? And you can look up the formula for Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I'm just going to copy this real quick, okay? So that we have it and I'll minimize that. And I'm just going to put this in as a comment. And what I'll do is I'll just go const Fahrenheit. Okay, I can never spell this. So Fahrenheit. And I'm going to go with 77 for right now. And then we'll do something like const, we'll do Celsius to Fahrenheit, okay, like this. And we'll set this equal to, we'll say what? We're just going to follow this formula. So we would take the temperature in Fahrenheit, okay? So the temperature in Fahrenheit, so I have the variable that represents this, and then minus 32, minus 32, and then times 5 ninths. So you can multiply by 5 and then divide by 9, okay? But if you think about the order of operations, you need to wrap this inside of parentheses, okay, so that it's done first. You then would multiply by five and then divide by nine. This actually could be reversed. You could divide by nine first and then multiply by five. You get the same answer, but we can leave it like this. It doesn't matter, okay? So let's just go ahead and comment down here and let's think about our steps. So if I console.log the Celsius to Fahrenheit variable, what would I get? Well, I would have Fahrenheit, which is 77 minus 32. So let's think about that. So we have 77 minus 32. That's going to give us what? Well, seven minus two is five and then seven minus three is four. So this would be 45. So the next thing we would do, we would take this 45, we would multiply by five and that would give us 225. And then to wrap this up, we would have 225 divided by nine, which is going to give us 25. So let's go ahead and console.log this Celsius to Fahrenheit variable and we will get 25 as a result. So let's pop this open. I'm gonna clear this out and then run this. And we do in fact get 25. All right, so what I wanna do now is cover some of the assignment operators we're going to use throughout our JavaScript course. And what I wanna start out with is something that we already know how to do. I'm gonna declare a variable using let. I'm gonna say something like let number equal 20, okay? So we remember that the equal sign is the assignment operator in JavaScript. So we're taking this value of 20 and we are assigning that to this variable number, okay? So if I console.log this number variable, I know I get a result of 20. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and let's run this. We do in fact get 20. Okay, so we know that when we declare a variable using let, we're allowed to reassign. So we don't type let again to do that. We just type the variable name and then we put the assignment operator or the equal sign and then just put the new value. So in this case, it's going to be, let's say 14, for example. And if I console.log the number variable again, what's gonna happen? Well, if we read this guy from top to bottom, which is how JavaScript's gonna execute this, at first we've declared the variable number and we've set the value to 20. Okay, so when we hit this console.log statement on line two, the value of number is 20, so that's what we're gonna get as the output. Then on line three, it's reassigned. So it's not 20 anymore. Now, number's gonna be 14, okay? So when we get to the console.log statement on line four, well, when it looks up this number, the value stored inside is 14, so the output's gonna be 14 there. So you're gonna get 20, and then you're gonna get 14. So let's pop open the terminal. And let's clear this out and let's go ahead and run it. And we do get 20 and then 14. In a lot of cases, you're not just going to randomly change the value held by a variable. In a lot of cases, it's going to be based on the current value of that variable. So for example, what we wanna know how to do is how could we add another value to the value that's currently stored in some variable, okay? So let's start out with just addition because it's nice and simple. Let's suppose we're at a restaurant. And we're gonna think about the final bill. So let's say let bill, okay? And we're gonna start out with a value here of undefined because we've declared the variable bill, but we haven't given it a value. So we know that JavaScript behind the scenes automatically gives this guy a value of undefined. So now here I'm going to assign a value of let's say three. Okay, so let's say we sit down to order things and the first thing we get is a drink. Okay, and the drink is $3, okay. So we have that. So if we console.log, 
the bill variable, we know we would get three at this point. That's pretty simple. So let's clear this and run this. We know we get three. Okay. So what would happen if I wanted to just increase the bill by a set amount? Meaning I wanna take the value that's stored in there, which right now is three, and I wanna add some amount to it because we're sitting down, maybe now I wanna get an appetizer and that's gonna be $7. So how could we do this? Well, we wanna think about the operator precedence and we wanna do something like bill is equal to bill plus let's say seven for $7, okay? So this is the cost of our appetizer. So how does this work? Well, we think about what's on the right side of this equal sign first, okay? And the reason we're gonna think about this is because this guy has a lower priority than this guy, okay? So if you remember from the previous lesson, we said that the addition operator had a higher priority than the assignment operator. So bill, the value that's stored in there right now is three, plus seven gets done first. So three plus seven is 10, okay? So 10 then gets assigned to bill. Okay, so if we console.log bill now, let's go ahead and clear this and run this, we do in fact get 10, okay? But we don't have to do it like this because there's an easier way. We have something called the addition assignment operator. And what we do is we can erase this all together. And what we're gonna say is plus equals, okay? So the way this works is if you have this variable and you go plus equals, it's going to take the value currently stored in bill and then it's gonna add it to what's here on the right side of this guy, okay? So right now it would be three plus seven, which would be 10. And then once that's done, it's going to assign that value to your variable, okay? So if we console.log this bill variable again, we're still gonna get the same 10, okay? So it works the same. It's just a lot cleaner and neater and easier. You can also do this with subtraction, okay? So I could subtract away seven and let's maybe change this up a little bit so we don't end up with a negative. Let's make this 10 and let's make this seven. So let's say you started out with a $10 bill, maybe they gave you a $7 coupon or something. So now we should have a three, okay, as a result. So let's go ahead and clear this out and I'll run this and we do get three, okay? You also can do this with times or divided by. So right now you would have 70, right? Because 10 times seven is 70. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can go through and do this with anything. So let's do divided by. And this is probably gonna give us a nasty decimal. So let me change this real quick. I'll change this to 14. Let's pop this open and run this and we get two, right? Because 14 divided by seven is two. So on and so forth. You can even do this with exponentiation. So let's change this to something smaller. Let's do something like four and let's make this two and let's do star star. Remember that's how you do exponentiation. And so what's gonna happen is here, it's going to look at the value currently in bill, which is four and then it's going to raise it to the second power. That's gonna be 16, and then it's gonna assign that value to this variable. I know this one's a little bit harder to think about, but basically this is like having bill is equal to bill, and then you would do your star star, okay? And then your two, okay? So this is basically taking the value in bill, and then raising it to the second power, and then reassigning that value to your bill variable. So if we go ahead and run this, we're gonna get 16. So let's pop this open clear this and run this. And we do in fact get 16. Okay. The last one would be that remainder operator. Okay. That we saw earlier. So let's pick something like five here. And if we divided five by two, the remainder would be one. So again, to think about this, I know this one's a little bit complex. If we thought about this as bill is equal to bill and then your remainder operator. Okay. And then two, well, what is the value of bill? It's five. The value here is two, so five, again, if you divide it five by two, you would get two with a remainder of one. So this right here gives you the remainder. So the value here ends up being one, and so that's what gets assigned to the bill variable. I know that one's a little bit complex, but you can pause the video and really think about what's going on there. Let's just go ahead and run this real quick, and we we'll do get a value of one. So what I wanna do now is head over to MDN. I'm gonna link this in the description. Basically, you wanna to go to a page called Expressions and Operators, and you wanna go down to see Assignment Operators, okay? And basically, you can read through the Assignment Operator, you can click on each one of these, it'll give you exactly what it does. This is Multiplication Assignment, we just saw that, Exponentiation Assignment, Division Assignment, Remainder Assignment, Addition Assignment, Subtraction Assignment. So these are the ones we need to know right away. I'm just gonna click on one of these so you can read further. You can go through and click on all of them. Again, MDN is a great resource to find out things about JavaScript. 
So the addition assignment operator, the plus equals, adds the value of the right operand to a variable and assigns the result to the variable. Okay, so let me show you another use for this. So we learned about string concatenation already. Let's say we did something like const first name is equal to John. And then let's do let because it's going to change. I'm going to do something like a greeting. And I'll do back ticks here so that I can just not worry about spacing and things like that. So I'm going to do hi comma I am. I'm going to insert my variable here. Dollar sign curly braces type the name of the variable. Okay, so hi I am first name. I'll put a space here. Okay, now let's say I want to add on to this. Well, before I do that, let me just console.log this so you see what's in the greeting variable here. So let's open this up, clear this, and run this, and we get hi, I am John, okay? But I wanna say a little bit more. So let's come back up here, and let's add on to this greeting. So I'm gonna go greeting plus equals, okay? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the value currently stored in there, it's gonna add on to that, okay? And then it's gonna reassign. So let's use backticks again, and I'm just gonna say, and I would like to welcome you to the course, okay? Put a semicolon there, and now if we pop this open, clear this and run this, we get, hi, I am John, and I would like to welcome you to the course. So again, it just took what was here, okay? And then it slapped this onto the end of that, okay, this whole thing, and then it reassigned that guy. So now the value of greeting is this whole string, okay? Both of them put together. All right, so one last thing that I wanna talk about, we have the increment operator and also the decrement operator. So basically, this is if you just want to add one to the current value or if you want to subtract one from the current value. So this is basically used all the time. So to use the increment operator, it's just plus plus after the variable name. So something like let number equal, let's say 12, and let's say I console.log my number variable. We know we would get 12, let's just go ahead and see that. So let's pop it open and see, so we get 12. If I go number plus plus, and this is after, okay, I'll talk about before later, but this is after the variable. What's gonna happen is it increases the variable by one. So I would console.log number here. And so now the value is going to be 13, right? If I pop this open and clear it and run it, you get 12 and then you get 13. So this guy right here is exactly like if we did number plus equals one. Okay, it's just another shortcut that you can use. Now for the decrement operator, let's go over here and put minus minus now. And basically this is like if I did minus equals one. So I'm just taking the current value and subtracting away one. So instead of 12, I'm going to have 11. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this. And now I get 12 and then I took away one. So I have 11. Now, if you go back to this page, the expressions and operators, you can go to this section called increment and decrement. And basically you see that we want this one and this one. Don't worry about the ones where it comes before the variable. We'll cover that later. So for right now, we have this one. I'll just click on one of them. You can click on the other one on your own and just read through it. But basically the increment operator, the plus plus increments, adds one to its operand and returns a value. Okay, and they give you an example here and you can kind of play around with that. But basically that's all it is. You have the plus plus that comes after the variable, that adds one, and then you have the minus minus that comes after the variable, that subtracts one. All right, so what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the comparison operators in JavaScript. And I'm gonna start out by talking about the equality operators. So to kick this lesson off, I'm gonna go back to MDN and we're gonna revisit this page titled Expressions and Operators. And I'm gonna leave the link for this in the description. You wanna scroll down until you see equality operators, okay? So the result of evaluating an equality operator is always of type Boolean. Remember that's a true or false based on whether the comparison is true, okay? So we see that we have the equality operator, the inequality operator, the identity operator, and the non-identity operator, okay? So let's start off with the equality operator. And if we read this, it says the equality operator checks whether its two operands are equal, returning a Boolean result. So we'll talk about this in a minute, but with the strict operator, it's not going to attempt any type of conversion of the values, okay? So we know we have string values and number values and Boolean values. So with this double equals, what's gonna happen is it's going to attempt to convert, okay? And then compare the operands if they have different types, okay? So let's see an example of this real quick. And so I'm going to put double equals here. And I'm just gonna go const num1 and let's set this equal to 11 and then const num2 and let's set this equal to 11 as well. So right now the value for num1 and the value for num2 are the same, 
right? So if I asked you a math class, is 11 equal to 11? Well, yeah, that's true. Okay, so it's the same thing here. I'm going to do this with a console.log statement first, and then I'll show you how to do it with a variable. So I'm just going to say, is num1 double equal to num2? So let me caution you against a common mistake. You don't want to use the single equal sign here. Okay, the single equal sign is the assignment operator. It's used to assign a value. Okay, to check for equality, we either want to use double equals or triple equals. And again, I'll get to triple equals in a moment. So if I console.log this num1 double equals to num2, I'm just asking the question, is the value stored here the same as the value stored here? This is 11. This is 11. So yes, it is. So this should be true. So I should get true as a result. Let's go ahead and run this. And we do, in fact, get true. Okay, so now let me show you why this is a bit problematic to use double equals. If I change this from a number 11 to the string 11, what's going to happen is JavaScript's going to first do some type coercion, okay? And it's going to figure out, hey, if I convert this over, I can make these guys have the same data type, and then I can check the value to see if it's the same, okay? Okay. This can cause a lot of errors in your program. So obviously you want to stay away from this as much as possible. Sometimes you'll need it, but in most cases you won't. So let's go ahead and pop this open, clear this and run this and you still get true, okay? Now let's say I went to the scenario where we're working with triple equals. Well now, if I put this guy in here, it's not gonna attempt to do any type of conversion of values, okay? So it's not going to try to think about, well, hey, this one's a string and this one's a number, so let me do some type coercion here. It doesn't do any of that stuff, okay? So it's just gonna check it straight up, and if the data types are different, meaning one's a string and the other's a number, it's automatically going to fail and be false, okay? So if we run this now, we get false, okay? So that's the difference between the two. And again, if we come back to this page and we go back to this guy right here, you can see this is the strict equality, and the strict equality operator checks whether its two operands are equal, returning a Boolean result. But unlike the equality operator, this is double equals, the strict equality operator always considers operands of different types to be different. Okay, so no type coercion will happen. Okay, let me show you a different example here. And before I do this, I'm just going to change things up a little bit. So I'm going to just do const x is equal to, let's keep it simple and do something like the number two and let's do const boolean, and let's set this equal to true. Okay, and I meant to put this to one. And let's come up here and get rid of this comment. I'm just gonna show you something strange, but before I do that, let me show you how to use this with a variable. I'm gonna do const, and I'm just gonna do result, and let's set this equal to. We're going to say x, which is the variable up here, and I'm going to go double equals boolean, which is the variable right here, okay? So how does this work? Remember you have operator precedence. So this guy right here, the double equals has a higher level of priority than the single equals. So what happens is when JavaScript encounters this guy, it's gonna say, okay, well, I have the double equals here. So let me work with that first. So is X equal to this Boolean? Okay, in this case, it's going to be a yes because true is going to be coerced into a one, but more on that later. So because this part right here gets changed into true, True then gets assigned as the value for result, okay? Because this guy right here has a lower priority, so it gets done last. So if we console.log this result variable, we're going to get true. So let's pop this open, let's clear this, and let's run this, and we get true, okay? If I was to use triple equals here, now it wouldn't be true because there's no coercion happening. True is just gonna be true. One is just gonna be one. These have different data types. One's a Boolean and one's a number. So with triple equals, it's not gonna be equal. Okay, it's going to be false. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. And we do in fact get false. Okay, so now let's go back here. And I wanna talk about these inequality operators. These are very confusing when you first encounter them. The way I remember it is it flips the equality operator. Okay, so it turns true into false and turns false into true. So you can see here the inequality operator checks whether its two operands are not equal. Okay, so if it's not equal, now you're getting true. I know this can be confusing, but this is how you have to remember it. It's flipping the original, okay? So it returns a Boolean result, again, true or false. Unlike the strict inequality operator, it attempts to convert and compare operands that are of different types, okay? You can go through and read the examples on this page, but I'm just going to make my own real quick. So let's come back up here and let's do something like const. 
we'll say x is equal to, I don't know, let's do something like 12 and let's do const y is equal to, let's do the string 12, okay? So let's go const, and I'm just going to call this boolean because it's going to be a true or false, or let's call it result. Let's call it result. And then let's go ahead and say, is x double equal to y? So we already know that this guy is going to give us a true, right? We know this already, so let's just see this in the console. So let's clear this, run this, and we get true, okay? Now what happens if I put, I'm going to delete one of these, and I'm going to put an exclamation point followed by the equal sign. Again, this has a higher level of priority than this. So first, is x not equal to y? Well, in terms of the single equals behind this exclamation point, the answer to this is no. Because if I think about the double equals, the answer is yes. Okay, so it flips that. I know it's confusing. But basically, is x not equal to y? Well, again, because I'm using the single equals here, the answer to that is no. This is 12, and this is 12. One's a string and one's a number, but it will do some type coercion in this particular case. So we would say that the answer to this is no, because they are equal in terms of this, right? So is x not equal to y? The answer is no, so this would give you a false. So if I clear this and run this, I get a false. Again, notice how it's the opposite of this guy. If I run this, I get true. Okay, so if you get confused by that, just start out with the one that makes sense, which is the equality operator, and say, okay, if I put the exclamation point, it flips it. So it turns true into false, and it turns false into true. Okay, if I went up here, and let's just say I did this as the number 13 or something like that, well, now if I run this, I'm going to get true right? Because I'm saying, hey, is x not equal to y? Well, yeah, x and y are not equal, so that's true. Again, I know this is super confusing. If I come back here and just make this double equals, I know I would get false, right? So it's going to flip this true into false. Okay, so that's how I remember it. Now, the other guy, if we go back here, you have this guy right here, which has an exclamation point and then two equals. This is the strict inequality operator. So this is gonna be the same process as using triple equals. Okay, now we're just using the exclamation point and double equals. So this checks whether the two operands are not equal. Okay, so it's gonna flip the triple equals, returning a Boolean result. Unlike the inequality operator that we just saw with one equals after the exclamation point, the strict inequality operator always considers operands of different types to be different, okay? So for example, if I go back to this guy and I put 12 as a string here, well, let's say we put the exclamation point followed by two equal sign. Remember, these guys, if I use triple equals, they're not equal, right? Because the data types are different. So is X not equal to Y? Well, the answer to that is yes, okay? They're not equal because these data types are not going to be the same. So this should give me a true. Okay, so if I pop this open, I clear it, I run it, and I get true. Again, I know this is confusing, but you might want to do a few examples of this on your own. The way I remember it, again, I delete this and I think about, okay, is X equal to Y in type and in value? The answer to this is no. So I know the value here right now is false. So if I go ahead and run this, clear it, run it, I get false. If I deleted one of these and I put the exclamation point in front, it flips that. Okay, so it took the false that I got, and now I'm going to get a true. Okay, so if I pop this open, clear it, and run it, I get true. So that's how I think about it. It's just reversing the equality operator that it's related to. All right, so what we want to do here is to continue to talk about the comparison operators. We already talked about the equality operators. And so now what we want to do is talk about the less than operator, the greater than operator, the less than or equal to operator, and the greater than or equal to operator. So if you remember strict inequalities and non-strict inequalities from your math class, you're basically going to be good to go here. If not, I'm going to do a little bit of explaining here before we get into some examples. Let's say that we were in math class and we saw something like five is greater than three like this. Is this a true statement or not? And how can we determine if it's true or not? Well, the first thing you'd ask yourself, is five a larger number than three? Well, yeah, think about this in terms of money. If you had $5, is that more than if you had $3? Yes, it is, right? So this symbol here is the greater than symbol. It says that the number on the left is greater than the number on the right, okay? But if you don't remember that, in a pinch, you can just remember that the correct symbol will always point to the smaller number, okay? So in this case, it's pointing to the three. So that means this is true, okay? If I did something like this, let's say I did two is greater than seven. Well, this is false, right? Because now the symbol is pointing to the bigger number. It should always point to the smaller number. 
The correct relationship here is that two is less than seven, okay? When you work with a less than, you're saying the number on the left is less than the number on the right. Again, if you can't remember this, it's okay. Just remember that the number that's smaller should have the symbol pointing towards it, okay? So in this case, the symbol is pointing towards the three. In this case, the symbol is pointing towards the two. Now, if we were to log these guys to the console, let's say we did console.log, okay, and we come over here, let's close this up, and let's get rid of this, and if, let's go ahead and pop open the terminal, and we run this, we get true in each case. Again, if you went in and changed one of these up, let's say I made this a greater than here, well, now this isn't true, right? The symbol's not pointing to the smaller number, so I know this would be false. So I should have true and then false here if I run this again, and that's what I get. Right, true and then false. Now let's quickly talk about the scenario where you have a non-strict inequality. So this is where you see something like greater than or equal to, or if you see something like less than or equal to, okay? So in math class, when you think about a non-strict inequality, you're thinking about the possibility of something being equal, okay? So let's say we did something like console.log, and I said five is greater than five. At this point, this is a false statement. Five is not greater than five. They're the same value, okay? So if I pop open my terminal and run this, I get false. But if I put this equal sign here, now it's gonna be true because what we're saying is that, hey, is five greater than five? Well, no, but it could also be true that five is equal to five. And in this case, that is true. So only one of them needs to be true for this guy to be true, okay? So let's go ahead and clear this and run this now and we get true. Okay, so you're allowing for the possibility of equality when you have this or equal to. So I could flip this around and say less than or equal to, doesn't matter, because of the equal sign there, it's still going to give me a true result, okay? The only way you would get a false result here, let's say I did something like five is greater than or equal to something that's bigger, okay? So let's say we did something like six. Well now, five is not greater than six, and five is not equal to six, so both conditions failed there, so we would get a false, right? If we put this up and run it, we get false. But if I put something smaller, well then I'm okay, right? Because five is greater than three, that first condition is met, so we know that we would get a true statement here, okay? So we'll go ahead and clear this and run this, and we get true, okay? So it doesn't matter that they're not equal, it only matters that, again, one of them needs to be true. Is it greater than or is it equal to? And if I flip this around and put less than, is it less than or is it equal to? So here it's not less than, it's not equal to. So again, if we run this, we get false, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And let's go ahead and further demonstrate this with a few variables. So let's say we do something like const and we'll say age of Jane. And we'll set this equal to something like 31. And you can change this around and we will throughout this example. And let's say we do something like const is full age, okay? And in most places, when you say full age, it's gonna be 21, right? That's the age where you can drink. That's the age where you can go to a casino. That's the age where you can do pretty much anything, okay? So let's go ahead and say that this is full age variable is gonna represent a Boolean, so a true or a false, just basically saying, is Jane's age gonna be 21 or larger, okay? So I'm gonna write age of Jane, and then I'm gonna put greater than or equal to, and then I'm going to put this 21, okay? So what I'm saying here is the age of Jane, which is 31, greater than 21. Well, yes, it is. So this is gonna give me a true, okay? It could also be true if I put this as 21 exactly, is 21 greater than or equal to 21? Well, yes, it is. So either way, it's going to pass the test. And that's just telling us that, hey, she can drink if she goes into a bar right? So we might run a little program that, for example, shows an alcohol ad if the person is 21 or older, but maybe if they're not 21, it'll show like a milk ad or something like that. So let's say we do console.log and I'll do my is full age variable. And in this case, if we clear this and run this, we do in fact get true, right? If I go up here and change this to 21, and again, we clear this and run this, we get true again. Only when I go less than 21, let's say I do something like 20, okay, and I pop this open and clear this and run this, now I'm gonna get false, right? Because this age of Jane, which is 20 now, is not greater than 21, and it's not equal to 21. Both of those conditions are not met, so this guy is false, okay? And you can also flip this around. Let's go ahead and delete this all together. And let's delete this, and let's do something like voting. So let's do something like const can't vote, and you can't use an apostrophe there, so I'm just gonna put can't vote like this. And I'm gonna put age of Jane, and I'll write it back in, and I'm gonna put 
is it less than 18? Okay, so strictly less than 18. If that's the case, then that person can't vote. So let's go back up here and go const age of Jane. And let's say in this case that it's 17. Well, again, 17, which is the age of Jane, is less than 18. So this is going to be true, right? So in this case, the person can't vote. So let's go ahead and console.log this can't vote variable. And let's go ahead and clear this, run this, and we get true, right? It's true that she can't vote. So if we come back up here, and let's say we change this to 18 exactly, well, now it's going to be false, right? Because once you turn 18, even 18 that age, you can vote, right? So the second you turn 18, you can vote. So this will no longer be true, right? The fact that she can't vote. So if we go ahead and clear this and run this, we get false, right? Because now she can vote because she's 18 years old. Okay, so let's talk about a few other things that might come up. The first thing is you can't use the logical not operator or that exclamation point to reverse things here. Okay, so we saw earlier, if we had something like const num1 is equal to, let's say, 15, and then something like const num2 is equal to, let's say, the string 15, okay? And we can do const is equal, something like that, and we'll say is num1 double equal to num2. Okay, so we know because of the fact that we're using two equal signs here that this guy is going to get converted to a number and then they'll be compared, right? So is 15 equal to 15? Well, yes, because they get converted. So if we go ahead, and I didn't console.log this, so console.log, the is equal variable, okay, if we pop this open, clear this and run this, we get true, right? But we also know we can flip this guy by putting an exclamation point there and deleting one of the equal signs. So if I do that, it's gonna flip it. And so now my true will become a false, okay? But you don't have something like that when you work with the inequality symbols, okay? So I can't, in other words, put a less than there and then say, okay, well, I'm gonna flip this guy by putting this exclamation point in front. You see how it's highlighting red? Because you can't do that, okay? So you can put a less than there, and if you wanna reverse it, just flip it and put a greater than. So here I'm going to ask, is num1 less than num2? Well, in this case, you have 15 and then the string 15. With this guy, JavaScript is going to convert here. So it's going to convert them, in this case, the string into a number, okay? And then it's going to say, is 15 less than 15? The answer there is no, right? So we're going to get a false here. So go ahead and clear this and run this, and you get false, okay? And you can flip this around and put greater than. In this case, you're still going to get a false. Okay, the only way you could make them to be a true statement is to put an equal sign after, right? So you now you'd say greater than or equal to, or if you're doing the less than, the less than or equal to. So if you go ahead and clear this and run this, you do get true. Now, there's a couple of other weird things that happen when you work with these guys. Now, you see this guy gets converted into a number. If you're working with a Boolean, let's say I did something like true, true will be coerced into a one. Okay, so if I say is num one, I'm going to get rid of this or equal to here. So is num1 greater than num2? The answer to that is going to be yes, because this guy is going to be converted into a 1. Okay, if it was a false, they get converted into a 0. So let's go ahead and run this and see that this would in fact be true. And let's say that I put this as a 0. Okay, well now this is going to be false, right? Because this is going to ask, is 0 greater than 1? Well, no, it isn't. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this, and we get false. Now, additionally, you also have to deal with null and undefined. So let's talk about null first. So with null, it's going to get converted into a 0, okay? So let's put this as something like, let's say negative 1, okay? So is num1, which is negative 1 now, is that going to be greater than num2, which is null, and is going to be converted into a 0? Well, no, it's not, right? This is going to be false. Let's clear this and run this. We get false. If I flip the sign, it's going to be true, right? Because num1 is negative 1. Negative 1 is less than 0. So if we go ahead and clear this and run this, we get true, okay? Now, another thing, let me just change this to something like, let's say the number 1. If you use undefined, now it's going to get converted into not a number, okay? Now, when you work with not a number and you're using this less than or greater than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's always going to give you false, okay? So if I, for example, run this, this is not going to get converted to zero. So most people think that if you do a greater than there, that it would give you a true result, but that's wrong, right? So if you clear this and run this, you get false. If you flip this line here, okay? and you clear this and run this, you still get false. If you put an equal sign after and you clear this and run this, you get false. 
And if you change it to this one, okay, and you clear this and run this, you still get false, okay? So it's this guy right here, this not a number that it's getting converted to that's always leading to a false result. I'm gonna show you this on MDN. So again, if you go to this expressions and operators, and I'll link this in the description, and you go down to the comparison operators, we have what we already talked about, the equal, the not equal, the strict equal, the strict not equal. And we have all these guys, the greater than, the greater than or equal to, the less than, the less than or equal to. What you wanna do is go to the less than, okay? And click on that. And then you're gonna to come to this page here, which is less than. I'll just link this page directly in the description as well. And so what you see here is the less than operator returns true if the left operand is less than the right operand and false otherwise. So there's some examples here, they're very simple. Now, if we scroll down here, it'll tell you all the rules. We didn't look at comparing a string to another string. I don't wanna get into that. That's a little bit complex for us at this point. But I do wanna talk about these numbers here. So again, if both values are string, they're compared to strings. I'm not gonna to touch that for right now. So we'll say that otherwise JavaScript attempts to convert non-numeric types to numeric values. So the Boolean values true and false are converted to one and zero. So true is one and false is zero. Null is converted to zero and undefined is converted to not a number. Okay, so you think about this, if either value is not a number, the operator returns false. Okay, so that's why we were seeing false each time when we were running that example. All right, so what I wanna do now is move on and talk about conditional statements in JavaScript. In every programming language, you're gonna run across these conditional statements and they allow us to run different code blocks based on a given condition. So as a simple little example, let's say that we're going to make a food delivery app and for the food delivery app, if a customer is 21 years old or older, they can purchase alcohol. Otherwise, they can't purchase alcohol. And we're going to alert them either way, whether they can purchase alcohol or they can't. So to get things started, I'm just going to set up some variables. I'm going to do something like const, and I'm going to go customer. And this is just the customer's name, so I'm just going to use John, for example. Okay. And let's go ahead and do const age. Let's set this equal to 31 for right now. And although this is not the most efficient way to do this, let's set up a variable that's going to be a Boolean. Okay, I'll show you a different way to do this in a moment. But for now, let's do const is full age. And let's set this equal to, we're going to say is age greater than or equal to 21. Okay, so remember what's happening here. When you set this up with a comparison operator, first, JavaScript is going to say, hey, what's the value held in this age variable? In this case, it's 31. Is that greater than 21 or equal to 21? Well, yeah, it's greater than 21. So this part right here evaluates to true. And then that's going to be assigned to this variable is full age. Okay. So if you were to console.log the is full age variable, we know we would get true. So let's go ahead and run this. And we do get true, right? If you change this to something like 11, well, now 11 is not greater than 21 and it's not equal to 21. So if you run this, you get false. Okay, so let's set this back to 31 and let's go ahead and delete this. So now what I wanna do is write two console.log statements, one to tell the customer that they can purchase alcohol and the other that says they can't purchase alcohol. So I'm gonna say console.log and I'm gonna use backticks here. And then I'm going to, inside of these curly braces, type the customer variable, okay, to reference that person's name. And then I'm going to say, can purchase, and then alcohol I can never spell, so A-L-C-O-H-O-L, -O -O okay? And then I'm going to copy this and paste it, and I'm gonna change this from can to can't. Okay, so let's think about what we have so far with our program. On the first line, we're declaring the variable customer or assigning the value of John. Then on the second line, we're declaring the variable age or assigning the value of 31. On the third line, we're declaring the variable is full age, and this guy is gonna be a Boolean. So in this case, since the age is 31, and that's greater than or equal to 21, since that's true, we have a value of true here. But when we get to lines four and five, we just have these two statements, okay? And they're both gonna run, right? So one's gonna say John can purchase alcohol, the other's gonna say John can't purchase alcohol, Okay, so we don't want this, right? We want one or the other. We don't want the customer to be confused because they're getting these two different contradictory messages. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal, run this, we get both, right? So imagine you're opening this app up and it says, hey, John, you can purchase alcohol. And then, hey, John, you can't purchase alcohol. You might be thinking, who designed this? So to fix this, we need to introduce some sort of way to control the flow of the program. And we're gonna use an if statement for right now to do this. There's other ways to do it, but I'm going to type if, 
And then inside the parentheses here, I'm going to think about the condition that would evaluate to either true or false. Okay. Later on, we're going to talk about truthiness and falsiness, but right now I'm just going to stick to true or false. Okay. So I'm going to type the is full age variable in there. Okay. Remember this is a Boolean. So it's either true or false. And if this is true, I'm going to set up some curly braces here. Okay. So inside these curly braces, we have what's called a code block. So this is what we're going to say is a code block to run if the condition is true. Okay. So if the condition is true, what do I want to happen? Well, what I want to happen is this. I want to say that the customer, which in this case is John can purchase alcohol. Okay. So let's go ahead and stop at this point and let's run this. So we clear this and run this and we still have a problem, right? It says John can purchase alcohol and John can't purchase alcohol. So what happened? Well, what's happening is this is full age variable is true. So this code block is running, but nothing is telling JavaScript not to run this code block. If you change this and put 11 here, well, what's happened is this is now changed to false. So this guy is going to get skipped, right? It only runs if it's true. Okay. So it's very important to understand. So if we go ahead and pop this open and clear this and run this, now we get John can't purchase alcohol. Okay. So to fix this and to only get one of them to run, we're going to introduce something called the else statement. So I'm going to go else. Okay. You don't need any parentheses here. You're just going to use some curly braces. Okay. And then inside of here, this is going to be my code block. That's going to run if the condition is false. So let's say code block, code block to run if the condition is false. Okay. So you have to understand that now that we have an if and an else, only one of these is going to run. Once it figures out if this guy is true or not, if it's true, this guy runs, this guy gets skipped. If it's false, this guy runs, this guy gets skipped. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal, clear this, and run this. We get John can't purchase alcohol. If we change it to 31 again, and we clear this and run this, now we only get one of these. It says John can purchase alcohol. So now our program is working as expected and the customer is just getting one message and it's the appropriate message based on their age. Now, before we go any further, I do want to open up MDN. First page I want to reference here is going to be one that's about code blocks. So you have this block here. Again, I'll link this in the description. You have a block statement is used to group zero or more statements. And in our case, with the if statement and with the else statement, we set up these curly brackets. Okay. And then we put one statement inside. Okay, so the block is delimited by a pair of braces, again, curly brackets or curly braces, however you want to say that, and it may optionally be labeled. Okay, so you can see what they did here. They have a little if statement. Again, in this case, it's set to true, and you have these curly braces here. Okay, so inside, this is your code block. So let's also look at this if else page. Again, I'll link this in the description. The if statement executes a statement if a specified condition is truthy. We'll talk about truthiness and falsiness later. If the condition is falsy, another statement like your else statement can be executed. Okay, so they have a little example here you can play with. It deals with a function. So we'll talk about functions here shortly. But if you scroll down here, you can see all the different documentation they have, all the different syntax. And I'm going to explain something. So this is how we saw it here. Okay. And you can see that they say to execute multiple statements within a clause, use a block statement. Again, these curly braces to group those statements. Okay. Now let me show you something. So I'm going to delete all of these curly braces. Okay. Like this. And then let's go ahead and pop this open and clear this. And I'm going to run this and it still works. You get John can purchase alcohol. This is a comment here in each case. So it gets skipped over. So if you just have a single line, okay. In each case, you can do it like this without the curly braces. Okay. I don't recommend it. I always recommend to use, even if you have one line of code after just to use curly braces, just so you can keep track of what's going on. Okay. Now, before we move on to another example, I want to replace this directly. Okay. Instead of using a variable there, that's either true or false. I'm just going to take this logic here. And instead of storing it in a variable, I'm just going to cut it away from here and I'm going to put it in here. Okay. And then I'm going to delete this and it's going to work the same. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. Let's clear this and run this. We get John can purchase alcohol. Again, if you make this 11 and you clear this and run this, you get John can't purchase alcohol. Okay. Let's do one more example. Let's do something with voting. So let's do something like const first name is equal to Sarah. And then let's do something like const age is equal to, let's do 16 for now. 
And let's do an if statement. So if I'm going to go age is greater than or equal to 18. In most cases, you can vote at 18 years old. So I'm going to say console.log. And I'm going to use my backticks here and say that the first name, I'm going to reference that, can vote. And then let's do an else. So in this case, she can't vote. So console.log, I'll say that this first name variable, okay, can't vote. And we'll add something to this in a moment. For right now, let's just keep it simple. And let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and let's run this and we get Sarah can't vote, okay? So if you change this to, let's say 19, for example, now if we run this, we get Sarah can vote. So again, it's looking at this condition here and saying, hey, is this true? Well, in this case, the age, which is 19, is greater than 18. So this resolves to true, okay? So this code block gets executed. If we change this back to something like 14, okay? Well, then this guy is false, so it gets skipped over, and this guy gets kicked in. So we'll say that this guy is executed, so it would say Sarah can't vote, okay? And you could do something here, like console.log. And let's just keep this simple. I'm gonna say first name, that variable has... And you can calculate the number of years left, okay? So we can say that it's going to be 18 minus the current age. So in this case, it would be 18 minus 14, which would be 4. So that number of years, okay? But it could be years, so let's just put parentheses. We'll put the S there. And you can make this more complex by doing an if statement to determine whether you need an S or not an S, but let's just keep it simple, okay? So I'm going to say the first name, which is Sarah, has, in this case, four years left until voting H. Okay, something like that. Let's just keep it simple. So let's pop this open, clear this, and let's run this. And we get Sarah can't vote, and then Sarah has four years left until voting H. All right, so what I want to do in this section is to continue to talk about the conditional statements in JavaScript. We already learned about the if statement and the else statement, and how we could use these guys to control the flow of the program. So what I'm going to do here is just quickly recap that, and then I'll talk about the else if statement and how you can use that to expand your options. So let's say we did something like const, I'll do first name as a variable, and then I'll do something like John, and then I'm going to do const score. So this could be like a score on a test that you just took. And then I'm going to set up a simple little if statement. So let's say, for example, we want to see if we pass the test or we fail the test. So it's an either or situation. So I'm going to do if the score is, let's say, greater than or equal to 60, okay? Well, in this case, we passed. So I'm going to console.log that this guy here, which in this case is me, it's John, so I'm going to use the first name variable, okay? Notice how I use backtick so I can incorporate that. So this guy has passed the test, okay? And now down here, I'm going to set up my else. So this is going to be the situation where I failed the test. So console.log, and again, I'm using some backticks. I'm going to go first name has failed the test. Okay, so let's think about what's gonna happen. We have this score variable, and right now the value that's stored there is gonna be 71. So when we get to the if statement, the condition here says, is the score, which is 71, greater than or equal to 60? Well, yes, it is. So this is true. So that means this code block is going to run, and this code block inside of the else statement is not gonna run. It's gonna be skipped. So if we pop open the terminal and we run this, we get John has passed the test, okay? Now, if you drop the score to something that's going to be less than 60, let's say you pick 59, for example, well, then if you go ahead and run this, you're going to get John has failed the test. So at this point, you should understand how to use the if and the else statements. But let's introduce something else, the else if statement. Let's suppose that we wanted to also know the letter grade that's associated with our test score. So in most places, if you get between a 90 and 100, you get an A. If you get between an 80 and an 89, you get a B, you know, so on and so forth. So let's say that we come up here. I'm just going to delete this really quickly, okay? And I'm going to start up here. I'm going to ask the question, is the score greater than or equal to 90? Well, I know that he passed the test, right? Because you pass the test if it's greater than or equal to a 60 in this case. So what I'm going to do on top of saying that John has passed the test, I'll go first name that variable has received a letter grade of A, okay? So this would tell me that John has passed the test. John has received a letter grade of A, okay? So now let's say we wanted to check if the person got a B. So a B would be between 80 and 89. So now what I want to do is put else and then if, 
And then I want to put another condition here. So I need parentheses again, and I'm just going to check to see if the score is greater than or equal to 80. Okay. So let's go ahead and just copy this. So I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm just going to paste this in. So I don't have to keep typing. And then I'm going to change this from A to B. Okay. Now later on, we'll see how to really make this short by using a function. But right now we haven't gotten to that yet. So we just have to copy and paste stuff. Okay. So if we think about what's going to happen here, when JavaScript reads this guys from top to bottom, so first it's going to check to see if the score is greater than or equal to 90. If it is, it's going to run this code block, okay, right here, and then it's going to stop. It's going to skip the else if, it's going to skip any else statement that you have, all that stuff's going to get skipped, okay? So if this is not true, meaning it's false, then it goes here and says, well, is the score greater than or equal to 80? So if I got something like an 85, well, then this code block's going to run, okay? And everything else is going to get skipped. So in this case, it would say John has passed the test. John has received a letter grade of B, okay? And we can do another one. So let's do else if, and now I'll do score is greater than or equal to 70 in this case, okay? So let's go ahead and paste this back in. And now you still passed, so I'm going to give you a C now. And let's do one more, so else if. And I'm going to do score is greater than or equal to 60. Okay, so this is the last case where you can pass. So I'll go ahead and paste this in, and I'll change this to a D now. Okay, so that's the last case where you pass. And then since we only have one more case here, I'm going to go else. I don't need to specify anything else because... If the score is 59 or lower, they failed and they've gotten an F. Okay, so all I need is an else there. I don't need to put a condition in. So I'm just going to paste this and I'm going to change it and I'm going to change passed into failed. Okay, and I'm going to change the letter grade to F. So this would say that John has failed the test. John has received a letter grade of F. Okay, so if we go back up here, we see that the score is 59. So right now, this else statement should get triggered. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal. Let's clear this and let's run this. And we get John has failed the test. John has received a letter grade of F. Let's close this and let's go back up and play around with this. Let's say that we change this to something like 74, for example. Well, again, if we're executing this from top to bottom, first it's going to check to see if the score is greater than or equal to 90. No. Is it greater than or equal to 80? No. Is it greater than or equal to 70? Yes. So John has passed the test. John has received a letter grade of C. Again, everything else is going to get skipped. So if we run it now, let's go ahead and clear this and run this. We get John has passed the test. John has received a letter grade of C. All right. As another example, suppose we issue a greeting to our user based on the time of day. So what I'm going to do first is just get the time based on the hour, okay? And this is built into JavaScript. You can go new and then date with a capital D. And then what I'm going to do is use parentheses and then dot get hours, okay? And then parentheses again. So make sure you type this exactly as I'm typing it here. Otherwise, this will not be correct. So you want to go console.log and I want to type the hour variable in here. Let's just pop open the terminal and see what we get. So I get 18 because where I am right now, it's 6.30 p.m., okay? Now, you're just getting the hour part. So you just get the six part, and it's in military time. So you have to add 12 in this case because you're past 12 o'clock, right? So 6 plus 12 is 18, so that's where that 18 comes from. So let's do a little if statement here and think about if the hour let's say is less than four. So this would cover the case where it's midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., or 3 a.m. So all the way up till 359. Again, you're just getting the hour. So if it was 359, JavaScript is just gonna tell you three, okay? So what I wanna do here is just console.log, a little greeting saying, go to bed, right? It's time for you to go to bed. And then the next thing I'd wanna check, I would do else if here, and I would do is the hour less than let's say something like 11. Okay. So up to the point where it's 1059, we would say it's pretty much good morning, right? So we will say console.log and we'll say good morning. And let me go ahead and put an exclamation point there. And then the next one I would do, let's say else if we'll say the hour is less than, let's go ahead and say up to the point where it's about four. Okay. So let's say less than five. We'll say this is the afternoon. So here we'll say console.log and we'll go good afternoon. Okay. And then let's say we get into the evening. So now we'll do else if. We'll say the hour is less than. Oh, and I made a mistake here. So instead of putting five here, it should be a military time. So you should add five to 12. So this should be actually 17. Okay. So if we come back here 
Now I want to think about good evening. So let's say this is some time that's between five and let's say nine, right? So this is, if I think about nine o'clock or even go to 10, you add 12 to that, that's 22, okay? So in this case, I want to go console.log, console.log, and we'll say good evening, okay? And then lastly, I want to have an else. So this is the situation where if I'm running the else, that means I've gone through all of these and it didn't work, right? So it's not less than four, not less than 11, not less than 17, not less than 22. Now what we're saying is that basically you're between 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. So from 10 p.m. all the way up to 11.59 p.m., okay, this is that situation. And I'll just say good night. So console.log and I'll say good, good night. And I want you to think carefully about how this is written. So let's say we had something like 10 o'clock. Okay, so 10 o'clock. Is 10 less than four? No. Then when it, so it skips this completely. When it gets here, it says, is 10 less than 11? Yes, so you get good morning and everything else is skipped. Okay, so if you write it in this manner to where you start with checking to see if it's less than four, then you check to see if it's less than 11, then you check to see if it's less than 17, then you check to see if it's less than 22, and then if all those have failed, you have your else that catches the rest, okay? So right now, since the time for me, it's going to be 18 in terms of the hour. So I would fall into this category where it says good evening, right? Because if I think about is 18 less than 17? No, right? So it goes here. Is 18 less than 22? Yes. So I get good evening. So if I pop open the terminal and clear this and then run this, I get good evening, okay? And now we can play around with this. We can, let's say, comment this out. And let's go over here and put something like three, okay, for three in the morning. So if we clear this and run this, we get go to bed. If we change this to, let's say seven, okay. So now it's not less than four, but it is gonna be less than 11. So we should get good morning. So let's clear this and run this, we get good morning. And let's say we do something like 15, okay. If you subtract off 12 from that, that's going to be three, so 3 p.m., okay. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. We get good afternoon. And we already said good evening. Let's see good night. So let's say that it was 23, okay, for 11 p.m. basically. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. And we get good night. All right. So what I want to do here is a quick little coding challenge. It's going to be very simple and based on the stuff that we know in the course already. So it's not necessarily going to be the most efficient way to solve this problem, but just based on what we know, that's how I'm going to give the solution. Okay. I'm going to post this in the description so you can copy it and paste it into your code editor without having to try and worry about typing as I'm talking. Additionally, if you have any trouble with this guy, go ahead and post in the comments and I'll be there to try to help you out. So the first thing that we're given is that John has test scores of 90, 81, 55, 70, and 80, and Megan has test scores of 88, 75, 87, 80, and 84. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is calculate each person's current class score by finding the average of the grade. So you know this from grammar school or high school or college that basically in your course, you have a series of tests that you take and your final grade is based on the average, in most cases, the average of those scores. To get the average, you sum all of the numbers, so in this case, all of the test scores, and you divide by the number of numbers. So you're dividing by the number of test scores, okay? In this case, you have five test scores in each case. So we would find the sum of these test scores and divide by five. Okay. For part two, we're going to log to the console who has a higher class score using if else statements. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to think about the scenario about what happens if the scores are equal. So if we change this and basically their average score in the end is equal, okay, meaning they got the same class score, what will we do then? So go ahead and pause the video, try to solve this on your own. If you can't, that's no problem. And if you can, that's great. Go ahead and unpause the video when you're ready and you can look at the solution and compare it to your own. Okay, so hopefully you gave that a try. I'm gonna start by declaring two variables. So I'm gonna go const and I'm just going to say John's score, okay? And then I'm gonna go const and I'm gonna go Megan's score, okay? And in each case, I'm going to set this equal to, let's go back up here. I'm going to copy this here, and then I'm going to copy this here, okay? And this is the first task, right? We want to calculate each person's current class score by finding the average of the grades. So what I want to do is I want to add these numbers up and divide by five because there's five scores. So I'm going to use my multi-cursor here. I'm just going to hold down the Alt key, 
Okay. And that's how I'm getting all these cursors. And then I'm going to delete this comma and put a plus in. And then also I'm going to do that for this guy right here. Let's get rid of this and. And now we want to divide by five, okay? But do you see the problem with setting it up this way? We want to sum the numbers first and then divide by five. If you think about how JavaScript's going to do this right now, remember, because of the order of operations, it would divide 80 by five first, okay? And then it would give you a result there of 16, and then it would go through and add the numbers, okay? So you don't want that. You want the addition to happen first, so we're going to group this inside of a set of parentheses that tell JavaScript that it has a higher priority, okay? So now what we have is John's score and Megan's score, okay? So if you want, at this point, you can console.log each of these. So console.log, and you can use backticks and put something like John's score, and then I'll do dollar sign curly braces, John's score, okay? And let's go ahead and copy that, and I'll change this to Megan's score. So Megan's score. And let's fix that here. So Megan's score. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and look at this real quick. So I'm going to run this and I get John's score is 75.2 and Megan's score is 82.8. So as it stands right now, Megan has a higher score. Okay. So let's go ahead and print that to the console just by using a simple if statement and an else statement. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say John's score is greater than Megan's score, okay? Well, what do we wanna do? We wanna console.log, a simple little message, I'm gonna use some back ticks and say John's score, or let's say John's class score of, and then dollar sign curly braces, we'll put John's score in there, okay? Is higher than Megan's class score of, and then dollar sign curly braces, we'll do Megan's score, okay? So that will run if John's score is greater than Megan's score, which in this case it's not, right? If you pop this open and you run this, you don't get anything, right? You get John's score and Megan's score, but you don't get anything else. That's just coming from this console.log right here, okay? So what I want to do is introduce an else that's going to run when this guy is false, which in this case it is false. So I'm just going to copy this real quick and paste this in and just change it a little bit. And I'm going to put... John's score, so let's go ahead and select this in multiple places. And I'm gonna type Megan, and actually I need uppercase in one and lowercase in the other. So let's just do this without that. So I'm gonna go Megan's class score of, and then here I need Megan's score, okay? Is higher than, we'll say John's, okay? John's class score of, and then inside of here, we want John's score, okay? All right, so let's save this. Let's pop this open and clear it and run it. And we get our expected output. So Megan's class score of 82.8 is higher than John's class score of 75.2, okay? And I should probably put a period at the end of this and at the end of this. Okay, so let's think about some other scenarios. Let's say that I changed this up and let's say I made this into a 99. So now John's class score will be higher. And so this guy should be triggered, right? Because this is now going to be true. John's class score is going to be greater than Megan's class score. So if we clear this and run this, we get John's score is now 84 and Megan's score is 82.8. So we do get John's class score of 84 is higher than Megan's class score of 82.8. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. But what happens if in part three, we consider the fact that the scores could be equal? This means that John's score could be equal to Megan's score, okay? So what I'm going to do, and you can do this in any order, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna start by checking for that. So I'm gonna change this part to an if, and I'm gonna go John's score, triple equals to Megan's score, okay? So that's gonna be my first condition. And then down here, instead of having an if, I want an else if, okay? So now what happens is it's going to see if this is true first, okay? If it's not, it's then gonna check to see if this is true. If it's not, then it's going to trigger, because it's an else, it's gonna trigger this to run, okay? So let's go ahead and put a little message in here. And I'm just gonna grab this and paste this in here. And we'll say John's class score of John's score is the same, is the same as Megan's class score of Megan's score, okay? And let's just go ahead and take this 
and copy it and paste it down here just to check to make sure that works. Right now they have exactly the same score. So let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and pop this open and run this. And you see that John's score is 84, so is Megan's. So John's class score of 84 is the same as Megan's class score of 84. Again, if you need help, go ahead and post in the comments and I'll be there to check out your code and advise you on what you can do. So what I want to do now is talk a little bit more about the concept of type coercion and also something called type conversion. So because JavaScript is dynamically typed, we've already seen that if we were trying to perform operations with values of different types. So for example, if we're trying to add a string to a number, JavaScript will do some type coercion. And in that case, it's going to convert the number into a string and you're going to get string concatenation. So for example, we've already seen this, but const num1 equals, let's say the string 135. And let's say we do something like const num2 is equal to, let's say the number 15. And let's do const sum is equal to, we'll do num1. And I didn't mean to do that. So num1 plus num2, okay? And if I console.log the sum variable, let's think about what's gonna happen. So JavaScript encounters these values here of different types. So this 135 is a string, okay? And then it also has 15, which is a number, okay? So it has to make a decision. And in this case, it's going to decide to convert this 15 into a string, okay? And then it's going to do string concatenation. So you're gonna end up with 135 as a string with one five slapped on the end. So you can think about this as the number 13,515 as a string. So let me wrap this in some quotes here to make that clear. And then if I even do console.log, I do the type of operator and then sum. Again, it's going to look inside the sum variable. It's going to have this string, 13,515. So the value there is a string. So it's going to return string here, right, when I run this. So let's open up the terminal and let's run this. And we do, in fact, get 13,515 and then as a string. So let me minimize this real quick. I want to pop over to MDN. And I want to go to this page with the title of type coercion. Okay, I'm going to link this in the description, so don't worry about trying to find it. So type coercion is the automatic or implicit conversion of values from one data type to another, such as strings to numbers. So we just saw that, right? So if we go down here to the examples, it's exactly what we just looked at. They have the string five and the number nine. So JavaScript will coerce the number nine into the string nine, and then it concatenates the two strings together. Okay, so it ends up with the string 59. So we have already seen that. But what I want to talk about today is the type conversion. Okay, so this is similar to type coercion because they both convert values from one data type to another. But the key difference is that type coercion is implicit. Okay, so this is happening behind the scenes, whereas the type conversion can be implicit or explicit. Okay, so we're going to focus on the type conversion or the type casting, like some people call it, where it's explicit. Okay, so we're manually going to tell JavaScript what to do. So how can we override this result here? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I'm going to start with the first way that we already talked about. There's something built into JavaScript. It's a function where you type in number, okay? And then I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. So what this is going to do is it's going to attempt to convert this inside of parentheses into a number, okay? If it can, it's going to give you not a number, and I'll show you that in a moment. But basically what I want to do is comment all this out for one second. So control forward slash. That's going to comment all that out. And I'm just going to go console.log and I'm going to go num1. Okay. And I'm also going to console.log the type of operator and then num1. So let's just look at this output real quick. So we're going to clear this and run it real quick. And you get 135 and it's a number. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Now, another way that you could do this, and actually before I do that, let me show you what happens. Again, we should know this already because I already showed you. But let's say you type the word four. JavaScript does not know that the word four is a representation of the number four, okay? So it doesn't know what to do here. So it's just going to give you a result of not a number, okay? So not a number. And when you see the type of operator applied to not a number, you get number, okay? So you can think of not a number as an invalid number or a number that you can't perform a calculation with. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is change this back to 135. And I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. So what I'm gonna do is just put the plus sign out in front. Okay, I'm gonna delete these parentheses, I don't need them. And what this plus sign out in front is going to do, it's going to attempt to convert what's behind it here into a num. Okay, so if I pop open the terminal and clear this and run this, I get 135, okay? So whether you use that number that I just did or the plus sign here, the result is the same. 
and let me comment this out, and let me uncomment this out, and let's think about the result now. So if I add num1 to num2, I'm going to now have the number 135, because this plus sign out in front is going to convert it, okay? Then plus I'm going to have the number 15, so I should get 150, okay? And then the type of 150, this is a number, so I should get number. So let's go ahead and run this guy, and we get 150 and number as expected. And again, if I went back to this being number, okay, it's going to give me the exact same result. So it's just really a quicker way to do it and less typing, okay? But you can do it either way, it doesn't matter. So let's get rid of this, and I want to talk about a, another way to do this. So we have parse int and we have parse float, okay? So let me use a decimal number, so something like 135.995, okay? Something really close to 136. Let's say I did something like parse int, okay? And I'm just going to wrap this inside of parentheses, okay? And I'm going to uncomment this, and I'm going to recomment this. Again, I'm holding down control and hitting the forward slash, okay? And so if I pop this open and I clear this and run this, you just get 135 in number. So a lot of people don't understand what's going on there. And basically with parse int, it's going to take the numbers or the digits after this decimal point and get rid of them, okay? So it's just like you had 135. It doesn't do any rounding or anything like that. We have a way to round in JavaScript, and I'll show you that here in a moment. But basically, it doesn't do any rounding or anything like that. It does not preserve these digits after the decimal point, okay? If you do the plus sign or the number, it will preserve it, okay? So let's go ahead and pop this open, run this, you see it preserves it, okay? Now, if I change this to number, again, it will preserve it, okay? So let's go ahead and pop this open, clear this and run this, and it preserves it. The parse int is very useful in JavaScript. So we'll get to that later on, but you do need it. You might think, well, why would I ever want to cut all these digits off? Believe me, you will in some situations, okay? So we also have parse float, okay? That's another way that you can keep these guys. So parse float, if we pop this open and clear this and run this, same thing, right? 135.995, okay. So I promised you that I would show you how to round. So let's get rid of this. First off, if I just do math with a capital M dot round, and I put a string in here, something like 135 point, let's do 998, okay? What JavaScript's going to do is it's going to see that you're attempting to do a math operation on a string. So it's going to do some type coercion and try to convert this to a number, if it can, okay? And so if we pop this open, it's going to round that to 136 for us, okay? And you see that the type of is giving us number, okay? So that's your type coercion in action. Now, you can explicitly convert it first before you run this rounding operation. Again, that's something you can do. I always prefer to do that and not rely on JavaScript because in some cases you might make a mistake or an error and then later on you're in your program and you can't figure out what's going on. So it can cause a lot of bugs that are really hard to track down. So I always recommend doing something like this where you would do number and even though JavaScript will convert it for you, okay, you can convert it on your own and then you're sure that nothing's gonna go wrong, right? So now I'm rounding a number because let's say I put something in here like let's say four, again, this is going to give me not a number, right? If you ever try to perform a math operation and it's on something that it can't convert, you're gonna get not a number, okay? So let's get rid of this and let's go back to this 135.59 or something like that, just a decimal number. And again, let's just see the full thing. So if we parse float, and I'm just going to wrap this inside of some parentheses and I put my semicolon in the wrong place and let's come down here. I'm going to get rid of this for right now, don't need it anymore. And I'm going to take these and uncomment them out. So control forward slash, okay. And if we run this, we get 135.59 plus 15, which would be 150.59, okay. So if we open this up, clear it and run it, we get 150.59. Again, if you put parse int in there, you would just get 150, right? Because it would strip this part off and you would have 135 plus 15, which is 150. Okay, so before we get into converting a number into a string, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I'm just going to do one really long example. And so we need to think about the fact that outside of addition, all the math operations are going to attempt to convert strings to numbers because you're trying to perform some mathematical operation. 
So let's do const num1 is equal to 14 as a string. Let's do const num2 is equal to, let's do 7 as a string, okay? And I'm going to go const result is, well, actually, let's do it like this. Let's go console.log. And I'm just going to do all of these. So I'm going to go num1, and I'm going to go minus num2, okay? And then I'll do, let's just go ahead and copy it, paste it a few times. And we'll go through subtraction. Let's do multiplication. Let's do division. Let's do the remainder operator. I'm not going to do exponentiation because that would be a really large number. So let's just do these four, okay? And we're going to see that we get a conversion to a number in each case. If we pop this open and clear this and run this, we get seven, which is the result of 14 minus seven. We get 98, which is 14 times seven. We get two, which is 14 divided by seven. And we get zero, which is the remainder from dividing 14 by seven. Okay, so that should be clear. I want to do one more thing here. I want to just go const, let's go result is equal to, and I'm going to do something like 15 as a string, plus five as a number, minus 25 as a number, divided by five, okay? So I want you to pause the video and think hard about what this is going to do. What will be the result if I go console.log result? Okay, so hopefully you gave that a shot. And basically you want to first start to think about the order of operations. So we have a plus, a minus, and a divide by. So the division has the highest priority. So first JavaScript is going to say, what is 25 divided by five? That's five. So you have the string 15 plus five minus five. Okay. So next you have addition and subtraction, same level of priority. They're worked left to right. So first JavaScript will go, okay, I have plus, I have a string, I have a number. Let's convert five the number into the string five. So you would have the string 15 plus the string five minus five. So then this would be string concatenation. So you'd have 155 as a string minus five. When you get to the subtraction, again, if you do math operations outside of addition with strings, it's going to attempt to convert them to numbers. So now you would have 155 as a number minus five, which would give me 150. Okay. So if I pop open the terminal here, I do in fact get 150. Okay, so let's quickly talk about converting a number into a string, which does happen, but not as often as you need to convert a string into a number. So there are quite a few ways to do this. I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm just going to cover some that are basic. So basically, if I start with something like const, let's say the number 15, okay, and I want to, I forgot to declare variable. So let's say num1 is equal to the number 15. So let's say that I want to convert this into a string. So if I console.log my num1 variable, num1 variable, and I console.log the type of, okay, this guy right here, well, right now I'm going to get 15 and I'm going to get num. Okay, so if I clear this and run this, I get 15 and num. Now, if I come up here and just type string with a capital S, okay, just like before we typed number with a capital N, now we're typing string with a capital S. If I pull this back open, clear this and run this, I get 15 and now it's a string. Okay, so that's one way that you can convert it. This is again a function that's built into JavaScript. We'll talk about functions more later on. For right now, let's just use that. And then we also have something called to string. Okay, so I'm going to type 15 again. Now, this is going to give you an error if you directly put dot, okay, to string like this with parentheses. Okay, see how it's lighting up as an error? Okay, you don't want to do that. So you can fix this by just putting a space here. Okay. And that will actually fix this. So, and I put the dot next to it. So you have to put the space and then dot to string like that. So that will actually fix this error. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal, clear this and run this and you get 15 and it's a string. Okay. So I want you to make sure that you put the dot and then two, this is lowercase string has an S that's uppercase. Okay. And you need parentheses. A lot of people will misspell this. Okay. And I'll, I'm going to link all these in the description so you can use them. The other thing you can do is you can wrap this in parentheses, okay? And then it will work as well. So you can go ahead and clear this and run this and you get 15 in a string. All right, so one last thing that I wanna focus on here before we conclude, you could also do, let me just go ahead and change this back to the number 15, okay? And I'm going to go const string one is equal to, I'm going to use some back ticks here and I'm just gonna say my string number is dollar sign curly braces. And I'm going to put num1 in there. 
Okay, so it's going to convert this guy into a string for me. If I console.log the type of operator with this string one variable, it's gonna look at the value held there, and this guy, this value is going to be a string, okay? It's gonna convert that to a string for me. So if I go console.log the string one variable, and then console.log, I'm gonna go ahead and do the type of operator, and then the string one variable. And again, if we pop this open, and we run this, we get my string is 15, or my string number is 15. And again, this is in white, and then you see that it is a string. We just got done talking about the concept of type coercion and also type conversion with strings and numbers. Well, what happens when we work with Booleans? Well, in order to think about this, we first need to understand the concept of truthy values and falsy values in JavaScript. So I'm gonna head over to MDN and I'm gonna start out on a page called Truthy and I'm gonna link this in the description for you. So basically, when we think about a truthy value, in JavaScript, a truthy value is a value that is considered true when encountered in a Boolean context, okay? So when JavaScript expects a Boolean. So all values are truthy unless they are defined as falsy, okay? So this makes it really easy to think about truthy values because if it's not falsy and there's only a set number or a limited number of those, well, then it's going to be truthy. You can see here where it says that JavaScript uses the type coercion in Boolean context. So examples of truthy values in JavaScript, which will be coerced, okay, to true in Boolean context and thus execute the if block. So we've talked about conditional statements. We've talked about the if statement. So we know that if we put something in here that evaluates to true, it's going to run, okay? And there's some examples here. Let's go to the falsy page, okay? So here we see that a falsy value is a value that is considered false when encountered in a Boolean context. So again, JavaScript is gonna use the type conversion to coerce any value to a Boolean in context that require it. So such as conditionals, so again, the if, else statements, and then loops, which we haven't talked about yet. So here they list eight falsy values. We're gonna write down and work with five, okay? So we have the keyword false, and then we have the number zero, so we're gonna focus on that. Negative zero and zero n, we really don't need to worry about that. Negative zero is just zero, okay? And then zero n deals with this big int, which we haven't really talked about yet. We have the empty string, null, undefined, and not a number. If I come back to my code editor, I'm just gonna make some comments here, and I'm gonna go the falsy values, and then let's just list them. So zero, the empty string. So it can't be a string with a space, and I'll show that to you. It has to be an empty string, okay? You have undefined, and then you have null, okay? And then you have not a number, okay? So what I wanna do really quickly is just look at some examples that we already know about. So let's say we started with const and we have something like num1, okay? Unless that's equal to, I'm going to do the string 185. So we just saw that we could convert this string into a number by using this number function, right? So a capital N and you're just gonna type the word number and I'm gonna wrap this string inside of parentheses, and JavaScript is going to convert this 185 as a string to the number 185. So if we console.log this num1 variable, okay, and we console.log and we look at the type of, the value that's held there, so the value in this case is gonna be the number 185, so this guy's gonna return number, okay? So if we go ahead and think about this, this is going to be 185, and this is going to be number, okay, number. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and we get 185 and number as expected, okay? So if we come back up here, we also learned that we could change a number to a string by just writing string, okay, with a capital S, okay? So this is the string function. And now I'm gonna reverse this. Instead of a string, I'm gonna start with a number. And so this is going to change this into the string 185. And so this guy is going to tell me that I have a string, okay? So if we pop this open, and we run this, we get 185 in string. Okay, so what would happen if I wanted to change this into a Boolean? Well, you saw that we just wrote number to change to a number and string to change to a string. So for a Boolean, we're just going to type Boolean, okay, with a capital B. So it's really easy to remember. So in this case, because 185 is a truthy value, this guy right here, when I console.log this num1 variable, I'm going to get true. Okay, again, this is truthy because it's not falsy. If you look at the falsy values, it's zero, 
the empty string, undefined, null, and not a number. If it's not in that category, okay, or one of those guys, it's going to be truthy. So this guy is going to be converted into true. And then this guy right here would tell me that I have a Boolean, okay? So let's pop this open and let's go ahead and run this. And we get true and then Boolean. Now, what I'm going to do is just erase this, and we're going to go through some examples really quickly. I'm going to show you some things that you need to watch out for. So let's do console.log, and I'm just going to do a bunch of these. So let me just copy this, and I'll just do three at a time. So let's start with something like, and let me use the multi-cursor. So I'm going to go Boolean, and then some parentheses here, and I'm going to start with the empty string. Okay, so the empty string, we know this should end up giving me a false, okay? And then this one, I'm going to do an empty string here, but then I'm going to put a space in it, okay? So this guy, a lot of people think this is going to be false. This is actually true. So you need to really understand that this is not an empty string. It is a string that contains a space, okay? And then for the last one here, let's just do a string. So something like, hi, I am a string, something simple. So if we pop open the terminal and we clear this, and let me put what this should be. This should be true, right? Because it's a non-empty string. So let's go ahead and run this. So we get false, true, and true. Again, the one you really need to pay attention to is this one right here. This has a space in it. So it's very important you understand that that is going to be true, okay? So let's think about undefined and null. And what I'm gonna do here for undefined, I'm gonna go let, and I'm just gonna do my var, and I'm not gonna give it a value. Remember, you can't use const with this because if you declare a variable using const, you have to give it a value right then and there, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna give you an error and the program's not gonna run. But I can do this with let. I can declare a variable and not give it a value. So JavaScript behind the scenes gives it a value of undefined. So if I put Boolean in my var here, because this is undefined, undefined, I'm going to get a value of false, okay? And let me get rid of these for right now, okay? And let's go ahead and pop this open. And we're going to clear this and run this and we get false, right? Because again, the value there, if I console.log, just the my var variable, okay, pop this open, clear this and run this, I get undefined. Also, if I set this equal to null, okay, remember this is an assignment value. So if I clear this and run this, I get the same thing, right? The value has changed to null, but it's still going to be coerced into false because null is falsy. Now, if I set this as something else, let's say I set this to, let's say the number seven. Well, now this guy is not undefined and it's not null. It's just the number seven. Seven is going to be coerced. And I'm going to change this. I'm just going to say it's seven and it's going to be coerced into true. Okay. So let's pop this open, clear this and run this. And we get seven and true. Okay. So the last one I want to look at would be, let's do zero and I'm going to get rid of this real quick. So let's say we do console.log. And I'm going to do my Boolean again. Inside of here, I'm going to do zero. And then I'm going to also, let's just for reference sake, do one that's going to be true. So let's do something like 59. doesn't matter what you pick. And then let's do something that's going to convert to not a number. So let's do the string four and let's do minus five. Okay. So this right here, when JavaScript encounters a math operation like the minus, okay. And it says, okay, I'm trying to convert this to a number and I can't. So this guy ends up being not a number and not a number minus five, okay, will end up being not a number. So if we go ahead and pop this open, this is going to be false, right? And this is going to be false. Actually, this is going to be true, sorry. And this is going to be false. Okay, so we get zero converts to false, 59, the number converts to true. And this guy, because the result is going to be not a number, is false. So let's go ahead and pop this open, clear this and run this and you get false, true, false. Again, if you take this Boolean out of the way, if you're a little confused by this, what happens is if you just run this as it is, you're going to get not a number. So you get false, true, and then not a number, which is the result of doing this operation. Okay, so let's work with this in the context of the if statements and the else statements, just to get a little practice. So we've already seen with the if else statements, we would type something like if, and we would put a condition in here that we want to end up being true or false. If I just type in true, it's always going to run. So if I do something like if true, I'll put console.log and I'll say the condition is true, okay? And then if it's false, the else would kick off. So I'll go console.log and I'll say the condition is false. 
Now this guy is highlighting this way because I've typed true in here, okay? So the code editor automatically knows if you go through there and click this, it'll show you that this guy is never gonna run because this is true, right? So it's always gonna be true. So this is always gonna run. This is always gonna get skipped. If you pop open the terminal and we run this, we get the condition is true, okay? If you were to type false in here, it would never run. So now you see this is highlighting because this is false. This is always going to be skipped and this is always going to run. Okay. So we pop this open and we clear this and run this. We get the condition is false. Now we've seen how we can put things in here that evaluate to true or false using the comparison operator. So if I did something like five is greater than three, well, this is going to be true. So the condition is true, right? So that runs. So the condition is true. Then if I flip this, well, now the condition is false. So if I clear this and run this, the condition is false. Okay. But what about, again, if you just type something in here like, hi, comma, I am a string, and that's it. Well, now JavaScript has to use these rules, again, about truthy and falsy values. So this is a non-empty string. So JavaScript considers this to be a truthy value. So this guy is just like if I typed true in here. So this is going to run, and this is going to get skipped. Okay. So if I pop this open... And we run this, we get the condition is true. If you come back up here, again, if you make this into an empty string, not a string with a space, but an empty string, this is now going to be false, okay? So the condition is false. All right, so what I wanna do here is talk a little bit about the logical AND operator, and then also something called nested if statements. So we have to kind of work our way up to this. And we're gonna start out with a very, very simple example. Okay, so let's suppose that we're working as a leasing agent for a retirement home. And at this particular retirement home, you need to be 55 years old or older in order to live there. So let's set up a little variable. We'll do const age is equal to, for right now, let's put 59. Okay, so we know at this point that the person that's being interviewed to live here can live here, right? Because they are 55 or older. So we could set up a little if statement and for our condition, we're just going to check if the age is greater than or equal to 55, okay? So if this guy ends up being true, okay, if this guy ends up being true, this guy is going to run, okay? So what I want to do is print a simple little message to the console, say something like, yay, you can live here, okay? So really simple. And then down here, I'm going to do an else. So this will run, again, if this turns out to be false, so if the person was 54 or younger, then we would say something like console.log, and we would say, sorry, you aren't old enough. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and I'm just going to run this and we get, yay, you can live here. Now, if I came back and changed this to, let's say something like 51, well, now the age, which is 51 is not greater than 55. It's also not equal to 55. So this guy is going to end up being false. So this is going to get run. Okay. So we'll see, sorry, you aren't old enough. And that's what we see. Now, at this point, this is pretty simple and we should already know how to do this. But basically, we want to kick things up a notch. So let's suppose that your boss comes to you and gives you another condition for residency at our retirement home. Let's say your boss says, hey, I really like cats. I think they're very important for retirees to have a cat. So starting today, any new resident must have a cat. Okay, so we can set up a little variable and say something like const has cat. And for right now, let's set this equal to true. Okay, so we have to check both conditions. The person must be 55 years old or older, and also they have to have a cat, okay? So right now, this doesn't really work for us because the person could be 55 or older, but not have a cat, and we, wanna, we don't wanna tell them that, yay, you can live here. So let's get rid of this and this, okay? I'm gonna keep my else in there for now. And first, I'm gonna introduce something called the nested if statement. Okay, so this isn't the most efficient way to solve this particular problem, but in some cases you will need to use a nested if statement. So the first thing we need to realize is that we only get inside of here if this is true, okay? So if we check to see if the age is greater than or equal to 55 and that condition is true, then I can just ask another question inside of here. That's why we say it's nested. So another if block, okay? And I'm going to say the has cat variable, is that true? Okay. Now for beginners, a lot of them will do this. They'll go triple equals to true. Okay. But you don't need to do that because again, when you think about this variable right here, it's either going to be true or false. And if this evaluates the true, it runs. If it evaluates the false, it doesn't. Okay. So you just type the variable name if you're dealing with a Boolean. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is print a little message to the console and I'll use the same thing. I'll just say, yay, 
you can live here. Because again, in this particular case, and I'll put a smiley face here. In this particular case, the person can live there because both conditions are true. The age is greater than or equal to 55. So that got me into this code block. And then I checked to see if they have a cat. So that was true. So then once both of them are true, this is going to run. Okay. So if we pop open the terminal and we run this, we get, yeah, you can live here. Now, if I was to change, let's say this to false, right now you wouldn't get anything, okay? Because, well, first off, we haven't set up any else block here, but I would need some sort of else block here because the person is 55 or older. So this would go as true, okay? So I would be inside of here, but since this is false, this is going to get skipped. So I would need to come down here to this else and I could do something like console.log. Let's go ahead and say, sorry, you aren't or actually in this case, you don't have a cat. So you don't have a cat, okay? And I'll put a frowny face. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. So we'll clear this and run this so we get sorry you don't have a cat. Okay, so coming back up here, now let's think about this being true, but what happens if this doesn't meet our criteria? So let's say this was 51. Well, now the person here, okay, they're gonna fail. So they're never even gonna get inside of here. So you gotta think about the appropriate else block. Okay, so I would wanna have two different messages. One, if they simply can't live there because you don't have a cat, or one, if they can't live there because they're not old enough. So the first thing I would ask here is say, I would say, if the person has a cat, okay, then I know it's true that they just weren't old enough. Because again, the only way they got down here is if they weren't old enough, because if they were old enough, they would have passed through this gate right here, okay? And then if they didn't have a cat, they would have failed through this gate right here and we would have got this, okay? But in this case, it could be true that they weren't old enough, but they have a cat. So here, I just want to console.log that, sorry, you aren't old enough, okay? So a simple little message there and let me put my frowning face in there, okay? And let's go ahead and go up here. We put this to 51 and true. So let's clear this and run this. We get, sorry, you weren't old enough. Now, the other condition here would be that they weren't old enough, okay? And they also didn't have a cat. So basically they didn't have any of the conditions. So let's set this to false, okay? Right now, nothing would happen because in this particular case, this is false. So this whole if block inside of here gets skipped, okay? So we would come to the else block, but they don't have a cat. So this would get skipped and there's nothing else to do. So we put an else in here, okay? Meaning they don't have a cat and they're not old enough. So I'll say console.log. I'll do something like, sorry, you don't have a cat and you aren't old enough. Okay, and I'll put a frowny face. So let's go ahead and run this now and see what we get. So let's clear this and run this. We get, sorry, you don't have a cat. And I misspelled don't, so let's change that. So let's change this and let's run this again. So we see, sorry, you don't have a cat and you aren't old enough. All right, so that's a lot of typing and a lot of checking to do. And you might be thinking, man, there's gotta be a better way. So luckily for us, JavaScript has something called the logical, the logical and operator, okay? So it's gonna look like this. And so I'm gonna pop open MDN just really quickly. And I'll link this in the description so you don't have to search for it. So we have this logical and operator, okay? So the logical and operator for a set of operands is true if and only if all of its operands are true, okay? So if we go to this page here, this gives you a better idea of what it does. So basically this guy, this logical and operator returns the expression one if it can, can be converted to false. So in other words, it would give you a value of false and then that guy, that conditional that you're working with is gonna fail, okay? So it's gonna trigger the else in that particular case. Otherwise it returns expression two. Now expression two might be false as well. Okay, so it's got to check both. So what this is basically saying that it returns true if both operands are true, otherwise it returns false. So if either of them fail, it's going to return false. So let's go ahead and get rid of this, okay? And we're going to need to change this else as well, but let's do that in a moment. Let's start with this. So the first thing is I'm going to ask both conditions in here. So first, is the age greater than or equal to 55? And also, is the has cat variable equal to true? So again, don't do the triple equals to true. Don't do the triple equals to true, it's unnecessary, okay? So let's just go ahead and put the has cat variable. So what's gonna happen is first JavaScript's gonna look at this guy. Is the age greater than or equal to 55? Right now the answer is no, so it's just going to exit, right? So it's gonna return false and it's gonna skip that and we're gonna be inside the else block. 
But if I set this to something like 59, okay, well now this part is true. So now it's going to look at this part and right now it's false. Okay. So it would give you a false, but if I set this to true as well, okay, if I set this to true as well, well, then it would return true. Okay. And you can see that really quickly with a little console.log statement. And I'm just going to say age is greater than or equal to 55. And I'm just going to go has cat. Okay. So you can do this on your own basically to see if something would return true or false. So I'm just console.logging this guy. So this is either going to give me true or false. So if I pop this open and I run this, I get true. Okay. And if you change something here, let's say I change this to false. Okay. And I pop this back open and I run this, I get false. Okay. And if I go ahead and put this back to true and I change, let's say this to something like, I don't know, 49, for example, let's pop this open and let's run this. We get false. Okay. So let's put this back to 59. Okay. So that this passes. So now this is going to be true and this is going to be true. Okay. So what we'd have here is we'd be inside of this if block now. Okay. And so what I want to say is just one console.log. Yay. You can live here. Okay. And then smiley face. Now down here, this else would be a little bit more complex because we don't automatically know what's wrong before we just checked first to see if the age was 55 or older. So we knew if we got down here that basically the person wasn't old enough. So we just needed to check if they have a cat. So in this particular case, what you can do, and there's more efficient ways to do this and we'll see this later on, but let's just do if, and we're going to say that the has cat variable, okay, is false. Now we haven't talked about the logical not operator. Okay. But instead of doing this triple equals to false, what we're going to do is we're going to put an exclamation point in front of this variable. And it's basically asking if this guy is false. Okay. We'll talk more about this later on. If this is confusing for you, then what you can do is just put this as if has cat triple equals to false like this. Okay. It's the same thing. So let's go ahead and put this back to the exclamation point here. And then I'm going to put and, okay, I'm going to put the age is less than 55. Okay. So if both of these conditions are true, I basically want to have a console.log statement that matches this down here. So I'm going to just grab this, put it away, and let's put this in here. And then basically from there, you see, sorry, you don't have a cat and you're old enough. Because both of the conditions there are met, right? The person didn't have a cat and they weren't old enough. So I want that one. Now, if the person, for example, had a cat or was old enough, then this is going to get skipped. And now we're going to come down here. Okay. So now I can just ask, well, which one was it? I can do an else if here. So let me move this up here and go else if. Okay. And I'm just going to check now to see if they have a cat. So if they have a cat, well, then I know the problem was they weren't old enough. Okay. And then if they don't have a cat, then I know that the problem was they didn't have a cat. So sorry, you don't, you don't have a cat. And I know this is a bit of a long example, but I just want to show you how complex these things can get really quickly. And I'll show you as we move through the course, better ways to solve this type of problem. For right now, we have limited tools in our toolbox. So we have to pretty much work with what we have. So let's go ahead and play around with this. Let's first set both of these to something that would be false. So let's do 53 and let's go ahead and do false. Okay. And let's come down here and let's go ahead and run this. So let's pop this open and let's run this. We get, sorry, you don't have a cat and you aren't old enough. So let's do something like now let's do that. The person has a cat. Okay. So again, you have to think about this. If you come back down here, we know that this failed because both weren't true. So we know we're in this else block here. Okay. But what's going to run? Are both of these going to be conditions that weren't met? Well, in this particular case, the person has a cat, right? So this is going to fail, right? So I'm asking if the has cat variable is false, which here it's true. And if the age is less than 55, well, only one of these is true. So this is going to get skipped. So now we're going to ask, do they have a cat? Well, in this case, yes, they do. So I'm just going to console.log, sorry, you aren't old enough. So if I clear this and run this, we get, sorry, you aren't old enough. And as the last condition, let's suppose that we change this to false. Okay. And then let's go ahead and make this something like 59 again. Well, now again, I'm going to not have a cat. Okay. But I was old enough. So I'll get, sorry, you don't have a cat. So let's pop this open, clear this and run this. And we get, sorry, you don't have a cat.
All right, so now what we want to do is a second little coding challenge. And so what we're going to be doing is setting up variables for age, is citizen, and is registered. The initial values are going to be set to 19, that's for age, true, that's for is citizen, and true, again, for is registered. Now, in order to vote in this theoretical country that we're living in, a person must be 18, a citizen, and registered. Okay, again, this is going to be for a made-up country. So we want to use the logical AND operator along with an IF statement to check and see if a person can vote. So if they can vote, we want to log a little message to the console just saying that you can vote. Now, we also want to use an ELSE statement to give the user a custom message that explains why they can't vote. So this part right here might be a little bit challenging for you. You should be thinking about using string concatenation, okay, in a series of IF statements. So go ahead and pause the video and try this guy on your own. Just see if you can get it. If you can, it's fine. If you can't, just think about it for five or 10 minutes. See if you can come up with a solution and uh, I'll be here to help you. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. So hopefully you are able to complete this challenge. I'm going to give myself some room here and I'm just going to start off by declaring some variables. So I'm going to come up here. Remember, we want to declare variables for age, is citizen, and is registered. The values aren't going to really change right now. So I'm just going to use const. I'm going to go age is equal to, let's go 19. And then I'm going to go const. And then it was is citizen. Okay. And that was true. And then we have const is registered. Okay. And that was true as well. Now, if we come back up here, it says we want to use the logical and operator along with an if statement to check and see if a person or a given person, doesn't matter who it is, we're just going to base it on the variables, can vote. Okay. So I'm going to use my little if statement and I'm going to say if, I'm going to say age is greater than or equal to 18. Okay. Then I'm going to use the logical and operator. I'm going to say is citizen. Okay. Well, you can do is register first. It doesn't matter. It popped up first. Now, remember, you don't have to put triple equals to true. Okay. I just want to say this one more time because this is a Boolean. Okay. This is either going to be true or false. You can just put the variable name. Okay. So it's going to look at it and say, is this true or false? Then I'm going to go and I'm going to go is citizen. Okay. So that sets up my if statement. I just want to put some curly braces here and then write a little console.log statement. And I'll say something like, yay, you can vote. Okay. And then I'll even do like a little emoji. Let's put like a, some sunglasses or something, something pretty cool. Okay. So let's do that. And let's come over here and let's go ahead and run this guy. So let's open up the terminal and let's go ahead and run this. We get, yay, you can vote. Okay. So the second part of this, if we come back up here, this is a little bit more complicated. What we want to do here is use an else statement to give the user a custom message that explains why they can't vote. Now, if you're just doing something like this to say else, and you just do console.log, something like, sorry, you can't vote. And let me put an emoji in here. Let me do something like, maybe just like a sad face, something like that. So we'll do that. And then we'll put this here. And let me kind of put in semicolon at the end. Well, if I go up here and change this, Let's say you change any of these. It doesn't matter which one. Let's start by changing this one. So let's change this one to false. Okay. So is citizen is no longer true. So the person's old enough and they're registered, but they're not a citizen. Okay. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this. We get, sorry, you can't vote. Okay. But what we want is actually a custom message where it says, sorry, you can't vote. And then it also says you need to, in this particular case, be a citizen. Okay. So what we'll do here is set up a little variable. And I'm going to set it inside of the else block. Okay. Now we'll talk about something called variable scope here shortly for right now. When I declare this inside of the else block, I can only use it inside of the else block. Okay. I can't use it outside. So I'm going to say something like let, and I'll just do my message. Okay. And first I'm just going to say, sorry, comma, you can't, you can't vote. Okay. I'm going to start with that and I'll put my emoji back in there. So let me put the sad guy. Where did that guy go? Oh, he's right here. First one. Okay. So let's put an exclamation point here too, and let's finish this off. Okay. So now what I want to do is set up some little if statements and I want to check each one of these guys. So the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to say, if the age is less than 18, well, then what I want to do is I want to add on to this message. So remember how to do that. We're going to do string concatenation. We're going to go my message. I'm going to go plus equals. Okay. So I'm going to be adding on to this 
And what I'll do is I'll put a space at the start of it, okay, because otherwise it's going to slap it right directly to the end of this. So I'll put a little space, and in this case I'll say, you aren't old enough to vote, okay? So then let's come down here and do another if statement, okay? So we've already checked this one, so let's now do another if statement. And I want to say, is the is citizen variable false? So remember, you can do this is citizen like this, triple equals to false. And again, we haven't gotten to the logical not operator, but I showed you in the last lesson that you could use this guy right here to flip something. So here we're just asking, is the is citizen variable false? Okay, if it is, well, in this case, we want my message. We want plus equals, and we'll put a space here. We'll say, you aren't a citizen yet. Okay, and let's put this here. And then the last one, okay, I'll put one more if statement and here I'm going to put the logical not operator again, and then I'll do the is registered. Okay. So again, this is just checking to see if it's false. If it is, I want to add on to that my message variable. So plus equals, and then I'm again, put a space here and I'll just say, you have to register to vote. Okay. So that's pretty simple, pretty easy. The only thing that you might be a little bit confused about is all these different if statements. We're used to having an if statement and then an associated else statement, okay? If you change this to else if or else, only one of them is going to run, okay? But if you have an if statement, it's always going to check the condition inside. And if that condition evaluates to true, it's going to run it, okay? So by putting just if statements, it's going to check this one, it's going to check this one, it's going to check this one. Okay. If you use an if here and then an else if here and an else here, it's only going to run one of them. Okay. So it's important to understand that. All right. So let's, we've already changed one of these. We changed the is citizen to false. So here we should start out by saying, sorry, you can't vote. And then because the is citizen again is set to false. When we get to this if statement here, the is citizen is false. So this will evaluate the true. And so this guy right here, you get, you aren't a citizen yet, which will get slapped onto the end of that string. Okay, so let's pop this open and run this. We don't get anything. So there's a mistake here. And I actually forgot to do a console.log statement. So after all of these if statements, you want to just console.log the my message variable. Okay, so that's the error there. So let's clear this and run this. And we get, sorry, you can't vote. You aren't a citizen yet. Okay, and if you change this back to, let's say, true, and let's say you make this false, well, now the is registered is going to fail. Okay, so pop this open and let's run this. We get, sorry, you can't vote. You have to register to vote. And then if you come back up here and again, you change this to true. And let's say you make the age something like 14. Okay, so we clear this and run this. We get, sorry, you can't vote. You aren't old enough to vote. And again, you can play around with this as much as you want. Let's say you made all of them to where they fail. Okay, so now the person isn't old enough. They're not a citizen and they didn't register. So we would expect to see three different things, right? So sorry, you can't vote. You aren't old enough to vote. You aren't a citizen yet. And then you don't, or you have to register to vote. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you were able to at least get some of it. Again, if you're not getting through the whole thing without me going through it, that's not a big deal. Okay. You can always come back to this challenge a few days from now and think about it fresh, okay? When the solution is not in your mind, try to work your way through it again, just to kind of reinforce some of the concepts. So we've already seen the logical AND operator in action. We know that we can use this to check multiple conditions. And if all of those conditions are true, we can use this to run a piece of code, okay? So for example, with our if statements and our else statements together. But what happens if we only need one condition to be true out of many? So it could be true that one's true or two's true or many are true. So some can be true, at least one of them, and we want to run something. Well, in this particular case, we're going to turn to the logical or operator in JavaScript. So really quickly, I'm just going to head to MDN. And we see this page here for the logical and operator that we've already covered. Again, it's going to be true if and only if all of its operands are true, okay? But when you go to the logical or operator, okay, now it's going to be true if and only if one, okay, the keyword there is one or more, okay, of its operands is true, okay? So we come down here. I'm just going to write this. So logical or operator, okay? So this guy right here, if you're on a normal keyboard, so above the enter, okay, above the enter, hold down shift, and that's how you can display that character. So you need two of them. 
So what I'm going to do here is start off with some variables. Let's do something like const. We're going to think about a scenario where we want to go to a bike ride. If the temperature is between 60 and 90 inclusive and it's not raining or it's not windy. Okay, so const, let's do current temp. I'm going to set this to 85 for right now so it's a good temperature. Const is raining. Okay, I'm going to set this to false and I'm going to do const is windy and I'm going to set this equal to false as well. Okay, so for right now, it's not raining, it's not windy and the current temperature is between 60 and 90 inclusive. Okay, so we should be able to go for a bike ride. So I'll do something like if. I'll do current temp, okay? And right now I'm gonna use the logical and operator just for reference. So I'm gonna put that it's greater than or equal to 60, okay? And current temp, okay, is less than or equal to 90. So let's pause for a moment, okay? First, we're gonna see is the current temp, which is 85, greater than or equal to 60? Yes, so this is true, okay? Then we'll think about is the current temp, which is 85, less than or equal to 90? Yes, so this is true as well, okay? Then we'll put and. So now I want to know if the is raining is false and is the is windy false. Remember, you can do something like is raining, triple equals to false, or to make this quicker, okay, we haven't talked about the logical not operator yet, but we're getting to that here shortly. So just put an exclamation point in front, okay, that's going to flip whatever you have. So it turns false into true and true into false. So in other words, because right now this is false, it will flip this into true. And because this is true, it's going to evaluate the true, right? So it's going to be true. So then we'll do and, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put an exclamation point and then is windy, okay? And so if all these conditions are met, meaning the temperature is between 60 and 90 inclusive, okay? It's not raining and it's not windy. I want to console.log a simple little message and say something like, it's a great day for a bike ride, okay? And you can put a little emoji in here if you want. So let's put a little emoji. I'm going to type bike, okay? And then... I don't know, something like maybe you could do an exclamation point and something like that. Okay, so if we pop open the terminal and we run this guy, we get it's a great day for a bike ride. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. We know about using an else statement, so we could do something like else. We could do console.log and we can say, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride. Okay, and I'll put a little emoji in here just saying that you're annoyed. So let's go to this one and I'll do my exclamation point and let's go ahead and see this. So you can change any of these. Remember the way this works, if any of these end up being false, the whole thing's going to fail. Okay. So if I change this to, let's say true now, okay. Again, when I look at the is raining, it's looking at this and this is flipping it. So right now it's true. So it's going to flip it to false. And we'll talk more about this again, coming up here shortly, but just think about the fact that if I had is raining triple equal to false, well, now it's not false. It's true. So this is going to fail. Okay. So if we pop this back open and I run this, we get, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride. Okay. Now you could make a more specific message and we'll probably get to that in a moment. For right now, I want to show you how to change this around and use the logical or operator. And let me just get rid of this all together, or actually I'll just leave it for now. I'm going to flip the way this works. So in the inside of the if block, I'm going to say this message here. Okay. So let me cut this away and let me paste this in and let me take this out. Okay. So let's take this out and let's put this in and let's get rid of this. Okay. So let me come back up here. So now the way this is going to work, I'm going to ask if the current temperature is less than 59. Okay. So I want to know, is this true? Then I'm going to use the logical or operator and I'm going to ask if the current temperature is greater than 90. Okay. Then I'm going to use the logical or operator again. And I want to know if the is raining variable is true now. Okay. So I'm removing the exclamation point and then I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to use the logical or operator again. And I'm going to ask, is the is windy variable true? Okay. So let's think about how this works. First, it's going to look at this condition. Is the current temperature less than 59? Well, in this case, it's not. Okay, it's 85. 85 is not less than 59. But it doesn't matter because we're using the logical or operator, so it just moves on. So now, is the current temperature greater than 90? No, it isn't, right? It's 85. 85 is not greater than 90. Then it's going to ask, is the is raining variable, is that true? Well, in this case, it is, right? It's set to true, so it's raining. So at this point, this guy is going to return true, okay? And so we're going to get console.log. This statement's going to run this, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride because it's raining. But if this was false, okay, it would continue down the path and it would look for is windy. So is windy, that's false. So because everything here is going to be false, 
This guy is going to get skipped over. It's going to return false. This guy gets skipped over and we'll get, it's a great day for a bike ride. So let's go ahead and see that real quick. Let's pop open the terminal, clear this, and let's run this. We get, it's a great day for a bike ride. So that's another way that you could have done this. Now, a lot of people will think about putting in something like a custom message. So again, we just saw that with our coding challenge. Let's go ahead and set this right here and say something like, let my message is equal to this. And I'm just going to remove this right here. And we're going to just use some if statements and some string concatenation. So I'm going to do something like if the current temperature, okay, let's say is less than 59. Well, then what I want to do is I want to go my message plus equals, okay. I'm going to put a little space here and I'll just say it's too cold outside. Now, the next thing we'd want to do is make another little if statement. And I'm going to ask if the current temperature is greater than 90. Now, some people might want to use an else statement here, but that's not going to actually work out. Remember, if you're using an if and then an else, one of them's going to run. If you're just using an if statement, then it doesn't have to run. If something's not true in there, it's not going to run. So in this case, remember how we get inside of here. If something in here, any of these fails, right? So it's too cold or it's too hot or it's raining or it's windy, that's going to put me inside of here. But it's not necessarily true that it was either too hot or too cold. It could be 85 degrees, but raining, okay? So when we set this up, we don't want to do an else here, okay? Because that's going to run if the current temperature wasn't less than 59. Well, it could have been 85 and you're going to say something like it's too hot and that's not actually true, okay? So you want to stick to just ifs here. And we'll find better ways to do this as we move through the course. But I'm going to do something like my message plus equals and I'm going to do it's it's too hot outside, okay? So now I'm gonna do another if statement, okay? And let me just get some room going. So I'm gonna do another if statement and I'm just gonna do is windy, okay? If that's true, then I'll wanna say something like my message plus equals, I'll put it's too windy outside, okay? For example, and then let's do one more. So if we'll do is raining, okay? And we'll do my message, and we'll do plus equals, and we'll do it's raining outside, okay? So let's go ahead and now do a console.log statement. And what we're going to console.log is this my message variable, okay? So let's pause for a minute and think about what's gonna go on. So first and foremost, if something fails here, again, meaning the temperature's not right, or it's raining, or it's windy, it's gonna return true, okay? In this particular case, you need the temp to be less than 59, Okay, or for it to be greater than 90, or for it to be raining, or for it to be windy. Okay, those are the conditions where we're not going to take a bike ride. So again, we start by just declaring this variable, my message, and the first value is, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride. Then we're going to add on to it based on what caused it to fail. So if the current temperature was less than 59, we're going to say it's too cold outside. Okay, then if the current temperature is greater than 90, we're going to say it's too hot outside. Now, only one of these could ever run, but you don't want an else there because again, if you do an if else, one of them's going to run and it might not have been the temperature that puts you in this block. Okay. So you have to think about that. Then when you get down here, you're checking to see if it's windy. Again, you'd put it's too windy outside. Then here you would say, if it's raining, it's raining outside. Okay. So let's mess around with this for a moment. Let's put the is raining to true. Okay, something like that, but it's still a good temperature, right? So let's pop open the terminal and let's run this. We get, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride. It's raining outside, okay? So again, I just wanna show you this so that it's crystal clear. If you put this to an else, okay? Right now, it's not too hot outside, but that's what's going to run, okay? So that's the error and we have an error here. So let me fix this. Oh, let me just put really quickly, let me delete this and let's pop this open. And run this again, we get, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride. It's too hot outside. It's raining outside, but it's not too hot outside, okay? The temperature was fine. So let's go ahead and put this back. So just so you know what's going on, and then let's just mess around with this once more. Let's put the temperature to 55, and let's put is windy to true. Okay, and I'll let you play around with this more on your own. Let's clear this and run this. We get, oh, it's not a good day for a bike ride. It's too cold outside. It's too windy outside. Okay. So I think we understand this at this point, and let's do one more example. I'll make it more simple, because I know we're getting kind of long in the video. Basically, you can think about the fact that you live on the West Coast if you live in California, Oregon, or Washington. And some people might include Alaska or Hawaii in this. 
So let's just go ahead and say something like const current state. And my current state is California. So let's put that there. And then let's do a little if statement. We'll do the current state triple equals to, we'll do California or, okay, the current state triple equals to, let's do Oregon, okay, or the current state triple equals to, let's do Washington. And then let's throw Alaska and Hawaii in there also. So current state triple equals to Alaska and then or we'll do current state triple equals to we have Hawaii. Okay. For general purposes, let's just assume you can live in one state only. So basically it's going to check to see if this is true, 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 if any of those are true. Okay. It could just be one of them. Then it's going to return true and this is going to get run. So I'll say something like console.log, yay, you live on the West Coast with me, okay? And let's just go ahead and put actually a little emoji. And let's put a beach, okay? Something like that. And then we can even put a little smiley face. So, or let's do sunglasses since it's cool. And let's go ahead and run this real quick. And so we get, yay, you live on the West Coast with me. Now let's do an else and we'll make this really simple. So console.log, I'll just do something like darn, you aren't out here with me. And then I'll just do a frowny face. So let's look for that. So I'll just do the annoyed one. How about that? Okay, so let's do that. And let's go ahead and change this. I'm gonna change the current state to something like Louisiana. And let's pop this open and clear this and run this. And we get darn, you aren't out here with me. All right, so what I want to do here is talk a little bit about the logical not operator in JavaScript. This is a pretty simple concept and something we've already used. But basically, if we start off with something like, let's say, const my boolean, unless that's equal to true for right now, and let's just console.log the my boolean variable so we can see that it's true. And let's open up the terminal and I'm going to run this and we get true. Okay. The logical not operator, let me write this down here as a comment. So the logical not operator looks like an exclamation point, okay? So what I'm going to do is put it directly in front of this Boolean value. So I'm gonna take that guy and put it in front there, and it's gonna flip whatever the Boolean value is. So if it's true, it turns to false. If it's false, it's gonna to turn to true, okay? So because of the operator precedence, this equal sign or the assignment operator has a lower level of priority than this guy right here, the logical not operator. So what happens is we start off with this value of true, it gets flipped to false. And then because again, this assignment operator has a lower level of priority, then it gets assigned as the value for my Boolean, okay? So if I go ahead and console.log this guy now, I'm gonna get false. So if I clear this and run this, I get false, okay? And all this guy is doing is just flipping things. That's all you have to remember. It takes a true and turns it into false, takes a false and turns it into true. So if I put this as, let's say false, now it's gonna flip it to true, okay? So if I clear this and run this, I get true. So that's nice and simple. Let's look at this with a little example with an if statement, okay? So first I'm gonna start out with something that is very familiar. Let's say that we're going to a restaurant or we're trying to choose a restaurant and let's say somebody in your party has to have Pepsi, okay? So a lot of restaurants only serve Coke or Coke products and a lot of them won't serve Pepsi. So you have a variable like, let's say const has Pepsi, okay? And right now let's set this equal to true. So the restaurant you're looking at has it. So we could do something like if this has Pepsi variable, remember you could do triple equals to true, but again, you don't need that because it's either true or false, right? So you can just put the has Pepsi variable in there. And then what I'm gonna do is run a little console.log and I'm gonna say, yeah, yeah, we can eat here. Okay, and you can do a little emoji if you wanna be cool about it. Let's put this one in here, okay? So let's do that. And I'll even do a quick little else and do something like console.log. We'll say, sorry, they don't have Pepsi. Okay. So something like that. You can put a little emoji in here as well. So let's do like annoyed, maybe something like that. Put whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So if we pop this open and clear this and run this, we get, yeah, we can eat here. Okay. And if you flip this to false, okay, let's say we go false. Well, now if we clear this and run this, we get, sorry, they don't have Pepsi. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way that you could do it is you could flip this. So let's cut this away and let's just paste that in. And then let's cut this and let's put this in here. So now what I wanna do 
is change the way this guy works, right? So we're getting the message inside the if block, sorry, they don't have Pepsi. But right now, this is still checking to see if it's true, okay? So one way I could do this, I could put triple equals to false, okay? And so if this does equal to false, then I wanna say, sorry, they don't have Pepsi. If it doesn't, mean they do have Pepsi and it's true, I wanna say, yeah, we can't eat here. So let's pop this open, clear this and run this. We get, sorry, they don't have Pepsi, okay? But there's a quicker way to do this. Again, you can use the logical not operator. So let's go ahead and put this out in front of this variable. And we have to think hard about what this is going to do, okay? So let's think about this. The first thing is we're going to think about the has Pepsi variable right now. It's false. Okay. So the logical not operator is going to flip that. So the false is going to get flipped into true. Okay. So now what happens is this guy is true. So this is going to run. So it's going to say, sorry, they don't have Pepsi. Okay. So if I pop this back open and I run this, we get the sorry, they don't have Pepsi. Okay. Because again, in the end, the false gets flipped to true. And that's what triggers this guy's to run. Now, if I come up here and let's say we change this to true, think about what's going to happen now. Well, we start out, we start out with a true value. Okay. And it's going to get flipped into false, right? So we start out with has Pepsi as being true. It gets flipped to false. So this is false. So this is going to get skipped. And then we come to the else block, this is gonna get run. And in this case, we say, yeah, we can eat here, right? Because there is Pepsi. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this. We get, yeah, we can eat Pepsi. It is a little bit hard to understand when you first start working with this. So that's why I recommend just stopping for a moment, thinking about things. Hey, I know this flips this. So start out with the original value. In this case, it's true. This flips it to false, so it goes from true to false. And I know if this is false, this gets skipped and this gets run, okay? You can always break things down into a series of smaller steps and think about what's going to happen when your program is run, okay? Let's look at another example. And this one I'll use, I'll throw some other stuff in there. So let's do something like const, or actually, let me just do a straight if statement. So if something like five is, and I need double parentheses here. So let's do five is greater than three. And then I'll come over here and then go something like, or we'll do something like two is greater than seven. Okay. So in this particular case, and actually what I want to do is put logical not operators in, but I'll do that in a second. So let's go ahead and just put like a console.log and we'll do something simple like the condition, the condition is true. Okay. Very simple. And then down here, I'm just going to go else. And I meant to put else and I'll say something like console.log. The condition is false. Okay. So let's think about this for a second. Five is greater than three, so that's true. So this is just going to be true and this is gonna run, okay? But what if I put the logical not operator in front of this? What's gonna happen here? Well, now this is going to be true and this is gonna flip the true into false. So you get false, so now it's gonna look at this one. Is two greater than seven? No, okay? So if I pop open the terminal, and run this, we get the condition is false. Even though five is greater than three, it's because of the logical not operator that's reversing things. Now, if I come over here and let's say I put a logical not operator there, well, now this is going to end up being false, but when we get here, two is not greater than seven. So this is false. The logical not operator is gonna flip the false into true. So you're gonna get false or true. And so true, okay, is going to be returned there because we're using the logical or operator. So we're gonna get the condition is true. Okay, so pop this open, clear this, run this, we get the condition is true. Okay, let's do one more example, and I'm gonna make this kind of a longer example, and I'll tie a lot of stuff in that we've learned to this point. So let's say that you're applying to a job, and this specific job requires you to have a degree for you not to be a minor, meaning you're 18 years old or older, and then you have some experience, some relevant experience. So let's do three Booleans, so something like const has degree. Let's set this equal to true. Let's do const, let's do is minor. Let's set this equal to false, okay? And let's do const, we're gonna go has experience, and we're gonna set this equal to true, okay? So right now you could get the job. So I'm going to do an if statement, and I'm gonna use my logical and operator, because what happens here is you have to have a degree, you have to not be a minor, okay? Meaning you have to be 18 years old or older, and then you have to have experience. So the first one is gonna be has degree needs to be true, okay? So again, you don't have to put the triple equals to true, just put the variable. Then the logical and operator, 
The next one is where we're going to use the logical not operator because you want is minor, but you want to check to see if it's false, right? So instead of doing that, you're just going to use the logical not operator. So in this case, if you think about what's going to happen here, this value is false, okay? But this guy's going to flip it to true. So you're going to get true. And then in the end, after everything's done, this is going to be true as well. Okay, so it's going to keep going. So we're going to do the logical and operator again, and we're going to go has experience. Okay, so all of these guys at this point would pass. This is true. This is false, which is what we want. And so the logical not operator flips it to true. And then this is going to be true. So you get true and true and true. So it returns true. And so we're going to run this block. So we're going to say console.log. We'll say something like, welcome to your new job okay something like that and if you want to put a little emoji in let's put some sunglasses super cool that you just got hired and then we can do like an else we'll go console.log and you can do a custom message here but for right now let's just keep it simple let's go sorry you can't work here okay and let's put an exclamation point and do a little emoji and let's do something like this one okay so let's pop open the terminal and clear this and we're going to run this and we get welcome to your new job okay if you change any of these let's say you change this to true okay so now now you're a minor okay and so what happens is here this is true but the logical not operator is going to flip it to false okay so you get true and then you get false okay so because of one false here it exits and it says okay this doesn't pass because you're using logical and so we're going to trigger this guy right here and it's going to say sorry you can't work here so let's clear this and run this and we get sorry you can't work here okay now, if you wanted to do some more, you could do a little custom message and we've done this a few times now. So let's just do it one more time. Okay. So let's do something like, and I'm just going to get rid of this and go, let my message be equal to, okay. Sorry, you can't work here and let's actually move this inside of here. Okay. And let's close this down. And now based on which condition it was that caused you to fail, we're gonna give you some extra information. So let's say something like if, we'll say has degree, has degree. So if that's true, actually what we wanna know is if that's false. So we wanna know if that's false, because if it's false, that means you didn't have a degree, okay? And if you didn't have a degree, we want to add on to the message. And so let me kind of scroll down a little bit. We wanna say my message plus equals. We'll put a little space in here and we'll say you don't have a degree. Okay, so let's stop for a minute and think about this. This guy runs, if this guy right here, think about this, if this was true, this is going to flip it to false, okay, and this is never going to run. But if this is false, meaning you don't have a degree, this will flip it to true, which is what you want, so that this is going to run, right, saying you don't have a degree. So now let's look at the is minor. So I'm going to do if, in this case, the is minor if that's true, you're not gonna be able to get the job. So we're just going to leave that. We're not going to use the logical not operator there because again, if this guy is true, I want to give you a little message. So my message, I'm gonna go plus equals. We're gonna say something like you aren't old enough. Okay, something like that. And then lastly, let me do something like if, and the last one was has experience. So has experience, okay, has experience. If this was false, you wouldn't be able to get, to, to get the job. So again, I wanna take something that's false and flip it to true so this runs. So I'm going to put the, again, logical not operator there. So it's gonna look at this. If this is false, it's going to flip it to true. So that's gonna allow us to run a little code block here. So my message will say plus equals, plus equals will say, you don't have enough experience, okay? So something like that. So now you can play around with this as much as you want. I'm just gonna change a few of these. So let's start with is minor. So right now that's actually true. So if we pop this open and we clear this and we run this, we don't get anything because that in console.log. So let's go ahead down here and I'm gonna console.log the my message variable. Let's pop this back open and run this, we get, sorry, you can't work here. You are old, aren't, aren't old enough. If you come up here and start messing with other stuff, let's say you don't have a degree anymore. So false for that. Again, when you come down here, if you go to the has degree, if this is false, this flips it to true and this guy's gonna run. So it's gonna also say you don't have a degree. So clear this and run this. So we get, sorry, you can't work here. You don't have a degree. You aren't old enough. Again, we can check the last one. So we'll change has experience to false. 
And in this case, again, when you get here, if this is false, this logical not operator flips it to true. And so we get this, you don't have enough experience added on. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. And we get, sorry, you can't work here. You don't have a degree. You aren't old enough and you don't have enough experience. All right, so let's look at one more thing here. So I wanna pull open MDN and I'll link this in the description. This is the logical not operator page. But down here, if you keep reading, you can see this double not. So basically it's possible to use a couple of not operators in series to explicitly force the conversion of any value to the corresponding Boolean primitive, okay? So we saw this with the Boolean function. So something like, let's say const, we could go my Boolean. Let's say this is the Boolean. Okay, remember we type string with a capital S to convert something to a string. We type number with a capital N to convert something to a number. And for a Boolean, it's a Boolean with a capital B. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Let's say you just take the number three, for example. So we know in this particular case, if I console.log this my Boolean, I'm going to get true, right? Because three is a truthy value. Let's go ahead and clear this and run this, we get true. Okay, if you put something like, again, the empty string, or let's just do zero, that's a falsy value. So clear this and run this, we get false. Now, the other way you can do this, and it produces the exact same thing, is to use double not operators. So let's do that in front of three. So this is going to end up giving you true because three is truthy, right? So clear this and run this, you get true. Again, if you use something like zero, or let's just do an empty string, we know that's falsy. So clear this and run this, and you do get false. All right, so now what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the switch statement in JavaScript. So basically this is going to be similar to using the if else statements that we've been working with. And this is going to be good if you want to compare one value to many different values and check for some sort of match. So we're gonna start with a simple little example here. Suppose we wanna state the current season based on the month of the year. Now we can do this with if else statements. Okay, and let's go ahead and do that first and then we'll see how we can translate this into using the switch statement, okay? So I'm gonna start with a variable here. So I'm gonna go const month, and I'm going to get this from JavaScript. So you have something where you can go new and then date with a capital D, and then use parentheses, and then dot get, all lowercase, and then month with a capital M, okay? And then parentheses again, okay? So what I wanna do here, just to make sure you got this right, console.log the month variable, and you're gonna get a number, and I'm gonna explain this. So if we run this, we get zero, okay? So why did I get zero? So where I am right now, at this point in time, it's January, okay? So January is the first month of the year. Now, the way this works is JavaScript's going to give you a number between zero and 11, okay? So it's basically zero index. So you can think about this as January is the first month, so it starts at zero. And then the second month is February, so it's going to be one, okay? So basically, if you think about it as January is the first month, February is the second month, you know, so on and so forth till you get to December, which is the 12th month, just move those numbers down by one, okay? And you're gonna be good to go, okay? So what I wanna do here, now that we understand that, is say something like let season, okay? And this is going to be assigned dynamically, so I'm not going to give it a value just yet, so that's why I'm using let. And basically, I'm just going to type an if statement, okay? And I wanna check if the month is going to be December, January, or February, okay? So in terms of the number that I'm going to get, remember, this up here, this variable here is gonna hold a number. So it's going to be for December 11, because it's the 12th month, we're shifting it down by one. January would be zero, right? It's the first month, we're shifting it down by one. February would be one. It's the second month, we're shifting it down by one. So if month triple equals to 11 for December, or month, triple equals to zero for January, or month triple equals to, and I messed it up, so month triple equals to one for February, okay? We're going to set the season variable equal to winter, okay? Because it's gonna be winter. And let's do a little emoji here. So I'm gonna type winter in there and see what we have. And let's use the little snowman, okay? Actually, I wanted a semicolon there, okay. So now I'm gonna do an else if, so an else if, and I'm going to check if the month triple equals to, we're gonna do two for March, okay? And then we're gonna go month, and then triple equals to three, and then month triple equals to four. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're checking for March, April, and May. So then let's go here, and we'll set the season here equal to the spring, and let's do an emoji with some flowers. So let's take that one. So now it's spring. So then we have two more, right? We have summer next, so else if, we're going to go month triple equals two. We're going to go five and then we're going to go month 
triple equals to six, and then we're going to go month triple equals to seven. Okay, so now we're checking to see if the month is going to be June, July, or August, right? So in that case, we're going to say it's summer. So season, season is equal to, let's go summer. And for this one, let's put a flame. So let's go flame. Let's get that one. And then one last one. So again, you could do else if there, okay, the month triple equals to eight, you know, or the month triple equals to nine or the month triple equals to 10. But really, you just need an else here, right? Because it's going to catch all the rest. So we would say in this case, the season is equal to, and let's go ahead and say fall, right? So for me, fall is associated with football. So let's go ahead and do football there for the emoji. And that's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and come down here. Let me get some space going. So I'm just going to console.log a little message. Okay. And this is going to use back ticks. And I'm going to say the current, the current season is, and then inside of some, again, you put your dollar sign, then curly braces. So inside the curly braces, I'm going to type the season variable. Okay. So in this particular case for me, this is going to be winter, right? Because if I come up here, this guy right here, this month is going to give me a value of zero because it's January. So when I come here, because this guy is true and I'm using the logical or operator, this is going to give season the value of winter, okay? And all of these are gonna be skipped, right? Because we're using else if, else if, and else. So everything gets skipped. So only one of these is gonna run. So when I come down here, the current season is winter, okay? So let's pop open the terminal. Let's clear this out. Let's run this. We get the current season is winter, okay? And obviously you can play around with this. You can comment this out. I'll let you do this on your own. But let's just put something like two, okay? Which would be spring, okay? Because that's going to represent March. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. We get the current season of spring. Okay, so we know how to do this at this point. But now let's switch over to the switch statement and see what we can do there, okay? So I'm not gonna comment anything out. I'm just gonna keep that for right now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type the keyword switch and I'm gonna put some parentheses here. Now, with the if statement, we do something like this. We go month, triple equals to zero, or you know so on and so forth. You don't do that with the switch statement. Just type month in there. So whatever you wanna check against. So here I'm going to open up some curly braces, okay? And then I'm going to do what we call cases, okay? So this is what I'm going to check. So I'm going to go case, and then I'm going to, going to go 11, okay? So basically you can think about this as if I said, does the month triple equal to 11, okay? Like we saw up here, month triple equals to 11. Well, this is how you write this with the switch statement, okay? So let me get rid of this, and I'm going to put a colon here, okay? And then after the colon, you would put what you want to do, okay? So in this case, I want to assign the season variable to be equal to this winter, okay, with this emoji here. So let me put winter in again and put my snowman back, okay? And then we'll put a semicolon here. And then I want to put break, okay? And the reason I put break there is it stops the execution of the switch statement. When we have the if statements, the else if, and the else, only one of them is going to run. With the switch statement, if you don't type break, it's gonna keep going until it either gets a break or it exits or finds the end of the switch statement, okay? So I'll show you that in a moment. Now, we had multiple conditions here that would give us a result of winter. So in order for us to do that here, I'm just going to type case and I'm gonna go zero, okay? And then I'm gonna type case and I'm gonna go one, okay? So it's gonna check these guys and see if there's a match, if it's 11 or zero or one, okay? Just like I did up here with the logical or operator, I'm basically doing the same thing here, okay? So now if I wanna go with the other ones, I'm just going to copy this real quick. So let me copy this and I'm gonna come over here and paste this in and let me just move this over. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at two and then three, and then four, okay? So in this particular case, the season is going to be spring, okay? And let's put our little flower emoji, okay? And there, and then I'm going to just paste this in again. So now I'm going to go five, and then six, and then seven, okay? And for this, the season's going to be summer. So let's go summer. So we're gonna go summer, and then for the emoji, I'm gonna go flame, okay? And then lastly, we have the fall. Now, we saw with the if else statements, okay, that we put this in the else because it was kind of the last thing that was remaining, okay? You can do the same thing with the switch statement, but you're gonna go default. So you type default and then your colon, and then basically, what do you wanna do, okay, if nothing was a match? Well, in this case, I wanna set the season equal to fall. So it's going to be fall, and then I put the football emoji. So football, 
football. And then let's go ahead and do this. And you always want to put a break statement here. It's not required by JavaScript. If you take the break statement out right here, it's fine because basically after this, it's exiting the switch statement anyway. The reason you want to put this in here is because you can rearrange the way the default is. You could put it first or in the middle or last, as long as you put that break statement in. Also, if you're working in other programming languages, most of them require the break statement if you're doing this. So it's just a good idea to put it in, okay? So if we go ahead and pop open the terminal and we run this guy, we get the current season is winter, but that's from up there. I didn't do anything down here. So let me copy this actually. I'm going to copy this and let's come down here and paste this in again. So from line 35 and also from line 13, you're going to get the same thing. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this we get the current season as winter twice, right? So it does the same thing. It's just a different way to do it. So if we come back up here, you can play around with this again. I'll let you do that on your own. You can put this as, let's say two, and let's go ahead and clear this and run this. So we get the current season as spring. Let's say we do something like six. So we clear this and run this. We get the current season as summer. And let's say we do nine. So we clear this and run this and we get the current season as fall. Okay, so you see everything is working as expected. So the main thing to understand here is that when you switch things, you don't want to type the condition in there, okay? You have these cases here, and then you want to make sure you put the break. If you don't put the break in, let me go ahead and show you this. So if you don't put the break in, let's say it was winter. So let's come up here and let's uncomment this out. So right now it's winter for me. What's going to happen is when it gets here, you're going to get the season of winter, okay? But then it's going to be assigned as spring, okay? So you're going to get winter and then spring in the console. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. So you get the current season is winter from our if else statements, and then you get the current season is spring from this guy, because again, what happened is when it comes down here, it gets this guy, okay, there's a match, but it just keeps going because you don't have the break, right? You didn't break. So it comes down here to this guy and it assigns it to spring, and then it's got a break. If you take this break out, now it's going to say summer, right? So if you clear this and you run this, you get summer, okay? And if you took this guy out, you would get fall, right? So if you clear this and run this, you get fall, right? So if you don't have that break in there, it's just going to keep going, okay, until it encounters a break or it gets to the end and then it's done. Okay, let's do another example just to solidify this. Let's say that we're building a little app and basically this simple little app let's a customer type in a beverage name, okay? And based on that beverage name, it'll tell you, yes, we have this beverage and here's the price, or sorry, we don't have that beverage, okay? So let's do something like const beverage, and I'm gonna set this equal to water for right now, okay? And let's do let price, and this is gonna change dynamically, so I'm just using let, again, I'm not giving it a value yet. So I'm gonna do switch, okay? And then we're gonna put in here what we wanna check. So it's going to be the beverage, right? So I'm gonna check, that. So again, with the if statement, you would do triple equals to something like water, but we're not doing that here. We're going to do that with the case, right? So I'm going to come down here, open up my curly braces, and I'm going to do the case, right? So what's the first case? Well, let's check water, okay? And if this is a match, then what do I want to do? Well, I'll set the price equal to one, and then I want to break, okay? So then let's do another case. So case, let's do something like orange juice, okay? And then if this is a match, we'll set the price equal to two. And then we want to break and let me get some room going here. Okay. So let's come back up here and I'll do another case. So in this case, let's do something like soda and we can do just a few of these. So let's go price. Let's set that equal to three and let's break and let me do a few more. So let's go case and let's do coffee, coffee, and let's do another case with the same thing. So case tea, right? So each of these, the coffee and the tea would be the same price. So you do coffee and then tea, and then we'll do the price is four. Okay. And we're going to break. And then let's do, let's do one more. So let's do case. We'll do beer and let's also do wine. Okay. Let's say those cost the same. So case we'll do wine and then we'll go ahead and set the price here for five. Okay. And then we're going to break. And then lastly, I'll do a default. So the default, and we'll do, in this case, I'm going to set the price to null, right? Because we don't have it, right? So you don't want it to be undefined. You want to specifically set it to null, okay? That way I know that I set it or my program set it to null. We don't have it. So then I'm going to put the break, okay? So let's think about how we can make a little message to the console. Basically, in most cases, we would do what? We would do something like console.log, console.log, use some backticks, and we'll say 
we have your, and then dollar sign curly braces beverage in stock. The price is dollar sign curly braces. Actually need two dollar signs here. So then the price variable will go inside and then I messed that up. And then let me do a little emoji with some sunglasses, basically because we're happy. And I meant to do that one. So let me type cool in there and get that. Okay. So basically we have this now. So let me hit this up and you could do this, but basically what's going to happen is if you come down here, if you get to this default case, this isn't going to work, right? So let me go ahead and pop this open, clear this. And we run this, we get, we have your water in stock. The price is $1. Okay. So if I go up here and change this to something like, let's say Red Bull, okay. Something like that. Well, this will kick the clause for the default. We get, we have your Red Bull in stock. The price is null. Okay. So we don't want that to happen. So we can use another little switch statement. So I'm going to go switch and then I'm going to type the price in here. Okay. And basically I want to check to see if it's null. Okay. So I'm going to do a case where it's null. If it is, I'm going to console.log something like, sorry, we don't have your, or we don't have this beverage. Okay. And that's basically it. And you can put a little emoji in here and let me put the exclamation point there and then do the emoji and I'll just put the annoyed one. Okay. So let's put this here and then let me come down here a little bit. And what I want to do is then set a default. Okay. And the default is going to be this. So let's go ahead and grab this now. Okay. So this is every other case where the price is not null. Okay. And then I'm going to put a break in there as well, just for good practice. And now if we pop this open and clear this and run this, we get, sorry, we don't have Red Bull. And then we also get the other one because I didn't break here. Okay. So what I should have done here is actually come through here and put break. Okay. And that's going to stop that. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this and we get, sorry, we don't have Red Bull. Okay. And then this one, I'm just going to cut this. Okay. And put this out here and let's go ahead and go back up here and we'll just go through a different scenario. So let's just say we had something like orange juice. Okay. And we'll pop this open and we run this. We get, we have your orange juice in stock. The price is $2, right? Or if we do something like, let's say beer, and pop this open and we run this, we get, we have your beer in stock. The price is $5. All right. So what I want to do now is talk a little bit about the conditional operator in JavaScript. This is a shorter way to write basically if else statements. There are certain situations where you'll want to use this. So let's start off with a simple little example, and I'll show you how to do this with the if else statements, the switch statement, and then the conditional operator. So let's do something like const we'll do first name unless that's equal to John and let's do const age, unless that's equal to 19. Let's log a little message to the console with whether or not this person can vote. So let me start with my if statement, forgot about that. So if I'll say the age is greater than or equal to, let's go 18. So in most countries you can vote if you're 18. So I'll go console.log. I'll use some back ticks and I'll reference the first name variable. And I'll say, can vote. Okay. And let me put an exclamation point there and a little emoji. Okay. A ballot box. And let's do a little else. Okay. And let me get rid of this. We'll cut this out, paste this in and clean that up. And let's come over here. We'll do the same thing. So I'm going to use some back ticks. I'll use my first name variable and say, can't vote. Okay. And now let's do a little annoyed emoji. So let's put that guy in there. Okay. And let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and let's run this guy we get John can vote. Okay. As expected, you can play around with this. You can put this to, let's say 14 and let's clear this and run this. We get John can't vote. Okay. So that's as expected. If we go ahead and look at the switch statement, most of you will remember this. You can just go switch. Okay. And then what I actually want to type in here is a bit strange at first, but you just want to type in true. Okay. So what I'm going to do inside of this block, I'm going to type case. And then basically here, I want to just say, is the age greater than or equal to 18? So is the age greater than or equal to 18? So this right here is either going to be true or false. If it's true, you'll have a match. If it's false, you won't. So I want to put what I want to do here. So rather than typing this again, let me just grab this and let's paste that in and let's do our break. Don't forget about your break. And then let me do the default. And in this case, let me go ahead and grab this guy right here. Okay. Come back down and let's go ahead and tab this over. 
and let's put the break in there as well. Again, that's a good practice to do that. So if I pop this open, you're going to get the same thing twice. You see John can't vote twice. Okay. Again, if you come back up here and you change this to something like, let's say 22, well, now you're going to get John can vote twice. Okay. It's just a different way to do the same thing. All right. So let's now talk about the conditional operator. And I'm just going to look at the MDN page with you really quickly. Again, I'm going to link all this in the description. So basically the conditional operator is the only JavaScript operator that takes three operands. So you have your condition followed by a question mark. So that's how I remember. It's like I'm asking a question. Then an expression to execute if the condition is truthy, followed by your colon. Okay. And finally the expression to execute if the condition is falsy. So it's just like a shortcut for the if else statements that we've been working with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to first ask is the age greater than or equal to 18. Okay. So this is the condition I want to check. If it's true, what do I want to do? So put the question mark. What do I want to do? Put that after the question mark. So in this case, let me gotta come back up here and copy this. I'm going to grab this. This is what I want to do. Okay. So get rid of the semicolon and just put a regular colon. So what do I want to do if it's false? Well, I'm just going to grab this guy. Okay. And you can put the semicolon at the end of this one because you're done. Right. So basically it won't give you an error there. So let's pop this open clear this and run this. And now we get the same thing three times, right? So John can vote three times. It's just a quicker way to do things. And it's very useful in some situations. And let's come up here and let's go to 14 now. Okay. So now we should get John can't vote three times. So let's run this. We get John can't vote three times. Okay. So let's start with a fresh example. So as another example, let's do something like const. We'll do first name again, and I'll set this equal to Sarah. And let's do const. I'm going to do is senior. So basically a true or false value based on whether the person is a senior citizen or not. And what we're going to do here is set the price of admission to, let's say like a park or I don't know, it could be a fair, whatever it is. Let's go ahead and say something like let price. And I'm going to declare this outside of the if statement and I'll explain why in a second. So let's say if, and I'm going to reference this is senior variable. So basically if the person is a senior, so if this is true, what do I want to do? Well, I want to assign a value of five for $5 to this variable price. Okay. And then I'm going to do else. I'm going to do price equals 10. So it's $5 for a senior, $10 for everybody else. Now I declared this variable outside of this because we haven't gotten to this yet, but basically you have something called scope when you deal with variables. And if I declared a variable inside of here, like let price here, if I go to console.log this outside, I'm going to have an issue. Okay. So I'm going to talk about this later on for right now. We just need to declare this outside of the if block and outside of the else block. Okay. So we can use it everywhere. All right. So if I console.log a little message, let's say I console.log something like, and I'll use my backticks here and I'll say first name, um, uh, the price to enter is, and I'm going to put $2 signs here because one is just to reference the dollar sign. Okay. The actual dollar sign saying it's this many dollars. And the other one is to insert a variable here. Okay. So then I'm going to put the price variable in and then let's put a period. And I'm going to put a little emoji in here for an amusement park and I put an ambulance. So let's do amusement park. Sorry. I need to pull that back up amusement park. So that one, and let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and clear this and we'll run this. We get Sarah, the price to enter is $5. Okay. So as expected, we come up here. That's because is senior is true. If you flip this to false, and we clear this and run this, we get Sarah, the price to enter is $10. Okay. So that's as expected. So now how could we do this with that conditional operator? What I'm going to do is just comment all this out. Remember you can hold down control and then forward slash. Okay. And I'm just going to start with something down here. That's fresh. So the same idea, I want to assign a value of five. If the person's a senior. Okay. And I want to assign a value of 10 otherwise. So I'm going to go const now. Again, this is a scope thing. So I'll talk about this later. So now I'm going to use const and I'm going to say the price const price is equal to. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the is senior variable and then a question mark. So what I'm asking here is, is this guy true? Okay. If it is, then what do I want to do? Well, I want to assign a value of five. Okay. To this variable right here. Otherwise, what do I want to do? I want to assign a value of 10 to this variable right here. 
Okay. So basically, because the assignment operator has the lowest priority here, it's going to think about this operation first, okay? And it's going to get a value from that. So basically, the is senior, if that's true, then this guy's going to be 5. The is senior, if that's false, it skips this, and this guy is going to be 10, okay? So that value, whatever's produced there, is going to get assigned as the last step to this variable price, okay? So you see if you pop this back open and you clear this and you run this, you get Sarah, the price to enter is $10, okay, as expected. If you flip this back to true, okay, well now this is true right here, so this is going to be assigned. So if we pop this back open and we run this, we get Sarah, the price to enter is $5. Now, you can also chain things together, okay? So let me comment this out now. It's gonna go back and forth between what we know and basically what we don't know. So let's uncomment this. And let's uncomment this as a block. So control forward slash. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce another variable. I'm going to say something like const is student. Okay. So basically in this particular case, you can't be a student and a senior in real life. You could be, but in this particular case, it's one or the other. So let's go ahead and set this to false for right now. Okay. And let's put an else if in here, we'll say is student. We'll type that in there. So basically if that's true, you're not going to pay the full price, but you'll pay more than if you were a senior. So you'll pay seven bucks. And then lastly, we'll do the else to catch everyone else. So they're not a senior. They're not a student. The price will be $10. Okay. So now the person's a senior, right? So if we pop this open, clear this and run this, we get a $5 price. If we flip this to false, okay. And this to true. Now we should see seven. So if we pop this open clear this and run this, we get the price is seven, right? So Sarah, the price enter is $7. And if we put them both to false, okay, meaning the person is not a senior and they're also not a student, we'll pop this open, clear this out and run this, we get Sarah, the price enter is $10. Okay, so as expected. But how would we now do this? Let me just comment all this out. How would we do this using the conditional operator? Well, basically what you're going to do here is you're first going to ask this question. So is this guy true? If it is, you still want to assign the value of five, okay? If it's not, you're going to ask another question. So you're basically going to put this right here. So you're going to put is student now, and then you're going to put, again, you're asking another question. So think about it that way. So what do you want to happen now? So if this ends up being false, this gets skipped and now we're here, okay? So what do you want to happen if this is true? Well, I want to assign a value of seven, okay? And then if it's false, I finally want to assign a value of 10. So let's think about this step by step. If this is true, okay, then this guy is going to be assigned as the value for price. Nothing else is going to happen. If this guy is false, this gets skipped and we go here. Okay, so now we're asking if this is true. If it is, this gets assigned, okay, as the value for price and everything else is done, right? It skips everything else. If it's not true, if it's false, then again, we're going to skip this and we're going to go here. So 10 is now going to be assigned as the value for price. So if we pop this open, and we run this, we get the price to enter is $10 for Sarah. Again, if you start messing with this, let's say it's true here. Well, now we're gonna get five, right? So we're gonna clear this and run this. We get Sarah, the price to enter is $5. And if you flip this back to false and you flip this to, let's say true, okay? Then let's clear this and run this. Now we get Sarah, the price to enter is $7, okay? So just a quicker way to assign things. I mean, you can see that's all on one line, nice, easy, and convenient to do and definitely preferable to sitting here and writing out all this stuff. All right, for the last example, let me show you a few different ways you can kind of play around with this. I'm gonna show multiple things, like how you can do more than one thing with the conditional operator. So let's do something like const first name again, and I'm gonna just set this equal to James. I'm gonna do const age, I'm gonna set this equal to 65. So I'm going to assign the value to two different variables using the conditional operator. So I'm going to declare them both here on one line. So I'm going to go let is retired. Then I'm going to use a comma and I'm going to put is student. Okay. So this is another way you can do this. If you're just declaring variables, you can separate them with a comma. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type age is greater than or equal to 65. If this is true, what I want to do is two things. I want to set is retired equal to true. And I want to set is student equal to false. So I'm going to group this in some parentheses and I'm going to say is student and I'm going to set this equal to false. And then I'm going to put a comma here to separate the two. I'm going to put is retired. I'm going to set this equal to true in this case. Okay. So what I want to do next 
is think about what to do if this is not true. So basically if the person is 64 or younger. So here I'm going to ask another question. Is the age, I'm going to say, is it less than 23? Okay, so basically, well, I can do less than or equal to 22. How about that? So we'll do something like is student, and in this case, I'll set that to true, and I'll put a comma, and then is retired, I'm going to set that equal to false, okay? And then what do I want to do if this is not true? Basically, if the person is between 23 and 64, right, inclusive. Well, in this case, the person is not going to be a student, and they're not going to be retired. So I'm going to set is student. I'm going to say that's equal to false. And then I'm going to put a comma and then is retired. I'm going to set that equal to false as well. So we're doing multiple, multiple things here. And it looks like I have a mistake. And let's see if I can figure out what's going on. Oh, I forgot my question mark here. So I need my question mark there. And that's what was the problem. So let's go through this step by step. So if the age is greater than or equal to 65, well, what's going to happen is this is going to get executed. So is student will be false. Is retired will be true. Okay. If it's not, if the person isn't 65 yet, then we're going to look at this one. So is the age less than or equal to 22? Well, if that's the case, is students going to be true? Is retired going to be false? Okay. And then lastly, if the person is again between 23 and 64, inclusive of those ages, then is student will be set to false, is retired will be set to false. Okay. So this is kind of not something you would do in the real world, but I'm just showing you an example of how you can do things. So you're noticing that this is grouped inside of parentheses. Okay. If I get rid of the parentheses here, it's going to light up on me. Okay. And give me a little error. Okay. So you want to group these multiple statements with parentheses. And then also you want to separate them with a comma. So if you do this, you're going to have a problem. Okay. So separate them with a comma. So if I just console.log, if I just console.log the is student and the is retired variables, and I meant to do is student there, so is student, what I'm going to get for is retired is true, and for is student I'm going to get false, because right now this is set to 65. So if I run this, I get true and then false, okay, as expected. Let's make a little message to the console. I'm going to go console.log. And basically I'm going to use some back ticks here, and this is where I'm going to show you some things. So I'm going to go first name. Okay. And then inside of here, I'm going to use this conditional operator again. So inside of these brackets, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask is retired. So if this is true, I'm going to put a question mark here. I basically want to put is retired. Okay. And I don't need the space here. So let's get rid of that. And you can put, let's say an exclamation point and put a little emoji in there. So let's do a beach, something like that. Okay. And then let me change this to the color one. And then after that, I'm going to put my colon. Okay. And then I'm going to ask if the is student is true. Okay. If it is, then what do I want to do? Well, now I'm going to put a string in here and I'm just going to say is a student. Okay. And I don't know what you would put for that. Maybe you would be annoyed. Let's just go ahead and put something like this. Okay. And you can put an exclamation point there, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to put one more colon in here. And basically I'll say is currently working. Okay. And then you'd definitely be annoyed. So let's go ahead and pop this open and let's do this one, something like that. Okay. And let's change this to an exclamation point. So we're consistent. So let's think about how this is going to work now. The current age is 65. So is retired is going to be true. Okay. So we know that. So we're going to get first name, which is in this case, James. Okay. Since this is true, this guy right here is going to say is retired. Everything else is going to get skipped. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. If this was false, it would then go to this guy right here and say, is this true? If it is, then you would get is a student. Okay. Again, if it was false, it would get skipped and finally it would land on this and would say is currently working. Okay. So let's pop this open and run this guy. We get James is retired. Okay. As expected. And if you come up here and play around with the age, you can do something like, let's say 44. So this person should be working. Let's clear this and run this. We get James is currently working. And lastly, let's see the example with a student. Let's say the person is 17. So pop this open, clear this and run this. We get James is a student. All right, so we're gonna be wrapping up this section here with a final little coding challenge. So we're gonna build a little receipt for a sample restaurant. And basically we're gonna have a food choice, a beverage choice. And from those two choices, we'll develop a subtotal. We'll get a tax, we'll get a tip, and then finally we'll get a final bill or the amount we're going to pay. So let's start with the food. Okay, so the choices are you can get a hamburger for $8, lasagna for $15, and then steak for $20. The beverage, you can get water, which is $0 or free. 
soda, which is $3, and then beer, which is $5. The subtotal is just the cost of the food plus the cost of the beverage, okay? The tax is going to be 8%. So as a decimal, which is how we're going to have to do this, it's 0 0.08 times the subtotal. Then the tip is 5% for bad service, 15% for good service, and 20% for excellent service. So an example here for bad service, you'd have 0 0.05, which is 5% as a decimal times the subtotal. If you wanted 15%, it would be 0.15, okay? If you wanted 20%, it would be 0.2, okay? So the final bill would be the subtotal plus the tax plus the tip. So basically you wanna build out this receipt. Remember, if you're using the back ticks, you can hit enter, okay, to make new lines. Basically on the first line, you'd want the food, okay? So the item you bought and the price. Then the next line, you'd want the beverage. What did you get? What's the price? Then you want the subtotal. So that would just be the amount of the cost of food plus the cost of the beverage. Then you want the tax amount, the tip amount, okay? And then the final bill. Now, you can do this in a lot of different ways. I'd prefer for you to use the conditional operator, okay, that we've been working with recently just to get some practice with it. But if you're not comfortable with that yet, if you want to use if else statements or switch statements, that's fine. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and try this on your own. All right, so hopefully you gave this a shot. We have limited knowledge of JavaScript, so there are better ways to do this, more efficient ways to do this than what I'm going to do here. But I'm just going to make some variables. I'm gonna do something like const food, and I'm gonna set this equal to, you just choose any of these three. I'm just gonna start with hamburger. So hamburger, and again, you can choose either hamburger, lasagna, or steak. And basically now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go const food price, okay? And here's where I'm gonna use my conditional operator. So I'm first gonna ask the question, is the food triple equal to this hamburger, okay? If it is, then I wanna assign a value of eight for $8. If it's not, then what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna ask if the food triple equals to lasagna, okay, in this case. And if it does, what do I wanna do? Now I wanna assign the value of 15 for $15. If not, the only other choice is a steak, which is gonna be $20, okay? So we have our food and we have our food price. So at this point, you can stop and check to see if things are working. So you can console.log. You can go ahead and do, let's do food and let's do food price, okay? Now let's pop open the terminal and let's go ahead and run this guy. We get hamburger and that's eight, right, for $8. And again, you can play around with this. You can put lasagna, okay? And make sure you spell it correctly, otherwise it won't work. So clear this and run this. You'll get lasagna, it's $15. And then you can try steak, which is going to be $20. So let's clear this and run this. You can do steak and it's $20. Now, you can start building it at this point in terms of your receipt that you want, but I'm just gonna build it in the end. So let's go ahead and just keep going. So I'm going to put hamburger here, okay? Just to keep that as the default and we can play around with it more later. So let's get rid of this and let's move on to the next thing. So I wanna do const beverage, so beverage, and again, we're just gonna start with a default of water, okay? So if you come back up here, remember you can get your choice of water, soda, or beer, okay? So then the price, I'm gonna go const beverage price. This is going to depend on what you got. So if the beverage, if the beverage triple equals to this water, then it's going to be $0, right? So it's zero or free. Then otherwise, I'm gonna ask if the beverage triple equals to, we're gonna ask if it's soda. In this case, remember it was gonna be $3. So I'm gonna put three there. And then otherwise, the only other choice was beer. So I'm just gonna put five for that, okay? So remember, this assignment operator is the lowest priority. So we're first gonna ask if this is true, okay? In this case it is. So zero gets assigned as the value for beverage price. If it's not, it moves on. So it comes down here, is this true, okay? If it is, three gets assigned as the value for beverage price. Again, if it's not, then it goes to this final option, which is five which gets assigned as the value for beverage price. So again, let's see this in action real quick. Let's just console.log the beverage, okay? The beverage and the beverage price, and let's go through the options. So right now it's water. So if we clear this and run this, we get water, which is zero, okay? If we change this to soda and clear this and run this, we get soda, which is three. And if we change this to beer, okay? If we clear this and run this, we get five, right? Beer and five. Okay, so that's working as expected. So let's clear this out now and let's go to the next part. So we want the food and the beverage, which we have, then the subtotal. So you can do this in the console.log statement in terms of just using back ticks and doing it there, but I'm just gonna assign it to a variable. So I'm gonna go const, say something like subtotal, okay? 
and I'm going to set this equal to the food price. So the food price plus the beverage price. Okay. So again, if you console.log this just to check it, so subtotal right now you have water, okay, as the beverage and you have hamburger for food. So that's going to be $8 plus $0. So you should have eight, right? So let's clear this and run this and you get eight. Okay. So now let's go ahead and think about the tax and the tip. So I'm going to go const tax, and this is a set rate. doesn't really depend on anything. It's just 0 0.08, which is 8%, right? So I'm just going to take 0 0.08 and multiply it by the subtotal, okay? When you work with decimals in JavaScript and you're doing operations, sometimes you get nasty decimals, okay? And there's ways around this, but we'll get to this kind of later on in the course. So sometimes you'll get a nasty decimal. Don't worry about that if that's your answer in this case. So let's come back up here and think about now the tip. So it's 5% for bad service, 15% for good service, and 20% for excellent service. So I'm going to do something like const service, and I'm just going to set it equal to good for right now, okay? And then I'll say const tip is equal to, again, I'm going to use my conditional operator. So if the service triple equals to, let's say bad, then what I want to do is I want to multiply 0 0.05, which is 5%, times the subtotal, okay? So that's going to be my tip amount. Otherwise, what I want to do is ask if the service triple equals to, let's say, good, okay? If that's the case, I want to do 0.15, which is 15% as a decimal, times the subtotal, okay? Lastly, the only other option is if it's excellent. So 0.2, or you could do 0 0.20, but same thing. So 0.2 times the subtotal if it was excellent service, okay? So I've got my tip down. So let's go ahead and console.log this tip variable. Okay. In this case, we have $8. Okay. For the subtotal, we have a tax that's 0 0.08 times eight, which is going to be 0 0.64. Okay. And then we have the service that's good. Okay. So it's good. And let me go ahead and console.log the tax also. So we have a service that's good. Okay. And then in this case, if it's good, then we want 0.15 times eight, which is going to be 1.2. Okay. Let's pop this open and clear this and let's go ahead and run this and we get 0 0.64 and 1.2 as expected. So everything's working there. We're basically good to go. So the last thing we want is the final bill. Okay. So the final bill, let's go const final bill. And I'm going to set this equal to, we're going to have our subtotal plus our tax plus our tip. Okay. And that's basically going to be our final bill. So now we've done all the hard parts. We just want to do our console.log statement. And again, I'm just going to put this all on different lines. So it doesn't matter how you did it, just as long as you can complete this. So let's do console.log. I'm going to use some back ticks and I'm going to start by saying the food. Okay. The food choice is basically, let's go ahead and put our food in there. And then I'm going to put a colon and do something like $2 signs because one is going to reference the actual dollar sign. And then the other one is to insert a variable here. So I'm going to go food price. Okay. So if you look at this right now, you get food hamburger. Okay. And that's $8. So maybe I want another colon here to make this a little bit better. So let's do that. Let's see what this looks like now. So that looks a little cleaner. Okay. So let's go ahead and now come down here and I'm just going to hit enter. Okay. So remember if you're using back ticks, you can do this to make a new line. So now I'm going to go beverage. Okay. And I'm going to go inside of these curly braces. I'm just going to type the beverage and then I'm going to do another colon. And then inside of these curly braces, I'm going to do the beverage, the beverage price. Okay. And that's not what I want. So the beverage, beverage price. Okay. So let's pop this back open and it's starting to get there, right? So we have the food, which is a hamburger, $8 beverage, which is water, $0. Okay. So now I want to hit enter again, give myself another line. I want to do the subtotal. Okay. And in this case, we have a variable for that. So you can just type it in. So that's the subtotal. I want to do my tax. We have a variable for that. So let's just type that in and I want to do my tip. We have a variable for that. So let's type that in. And then we want to do our final, our final bill. We have a variable for that. So let's just type that in. Okay. So basically everything's done. If we pop this open, clear this and run this, we get our sample receipt, right? So the food is the hamburger, it's $8. The beverage is water, it's $0. So our subtotal is eight. And really I probably should have put a dollar sign here, a dollar sign here, a dollar sign here, and a dollar sign here. Okay. To make this better. So let's pop this back open. Let's go through it again. So the subtotal is $8. The tax is going to be 64 cents. Okay. The tip is $1.20. Okay. 
And then the final bill is $9.84. So basically if you start with $8, okay, plus $0, you get $8. Then if you add the tax, it's $8.64. Then if you add the tip, it's $9.84. Now, let's just play around with this a little bit. Let's go ahead and change this to something like lasagna. Lasagna. Pop this back open and run this. And now we see everything change. Right, so my food's fifteen dollars. Water still zero. Okay, the tax is now a dollar twenty. The tip is now two twenty five, and the final bill is eighteen dollars and forty five cents. Now you can play around with this as much as you want. You can go through here and change, let's say, the service from good to let's say excellent, excellent. Okay, for example, if we clear this and run this, now your tip goes up to three dollars because it's twenty percent. Okay, so I'll let you play around with this on your own. I'm just going to change one other thing. From water, I'll just go to, let's say, beer. Okay, and let's just see that real quick. So we run this, we get lasagna is $15, the beer is $5, so your subtotal is $20. Your tax is $1.60, right? So that's 8% of $20. And your tip is $4 because we have excellent service. And 20% of $20 is $4. So this does give us a final bill of $25.60. So hopefully you were able to complete that. There's certainly much more efficient ways to do this, and we'll see that coming up in the next section.